It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. Well, boy, we got had a great week at Mobile World Congress. Miriam Joar is back from Barcelona. She'll give us a look at all the new phones. And I think the biggest story, the uh, HTC Vive. Uh, Ian Thompson's also here from the Register. Oh, Doctor, we'll talk about tomorrow's big announcement. The Apple Watch and a whole lot more. All the tech news next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit This Week in Tech, episode 500, recorded March 8th, 2015. The Puppy's Package. This Week in Tech is brought to you by FreshBooks, the easy to use invoicing software designed to help small business owners save time billing and get paid faster. Join over 5 million users running their business with ease. Try it free at freshbooks.com slash twit. And by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you get award-winning financial tools, unbiased advice, and a transparent view of all your investments. And best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash twit. And by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Go to squarespace.com, enter the offer code TWIT at checkout to get 10% off. And by Warby Parker Eyewear. Get boutique quality, classically crafted eyewear, including sunglasses, at revolutionary prices. For a free home try-on of five stylish frames of your choice, plus free three-day shipping, go to warbyparker.com slash TWIT. This is TWIT This Week in Tech. The show where we cover the week's tech news. Great panel here. Starting with Miriam Joar, just got off the plane from Barcelona. Tank Girl Hello. was in hey. Barcelona for Mobile World Congress. Madness. And you you must be exhausted. Did you get to sleep a little bit? No, no, I'm not exhausted. Well, uh, yeah, I slept for one thing. It's just a really long day. And I slept before I went to the plane. I slept on the plane. You know, now I'm really happy to be here. It's way more entertaining than watching movies. Good. Welcome back. Yeah. Nice to have you. Also here from... The Register, Ian Thompson. It's great to have you, Ian. Welcome back. Many thanks, Leo. Good to yeah. be back. We discovered that Ian lives nearby. I thought you lived in England. What did I know? <laughs> no, I've been out here ooh, nearly seven years yeah. now. Haven't said, I'm, I'm still saying gas now rather than petrol, but other than that, <laughs> still solid. What kind of accent do you have? Is there a characterization for your accent? Oh, um, probably uh, Posh RP, because I went to a boarding school. Posh I RP. I thought it was so. kind of posh. It sounded a little Sloan Rangery. I wasn't. Oh, you take that back. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure. Do I look like I wear red trousers? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, great to have you, Ian. Also, from Parts Unknown, from a Dropbox somewhere in Pennsylvania, Owen J.J. Stone. Hello, Owen. Oh, he's muted. Did you mute your Who's beats? Muted? Oh, there we go. Speak to me. Ooh. Talk What'd to you me. Say? What'd Talk say? to me. Oh, doctor. I miss you, Uncle Leo. Episode 500. How can I miss you if you won't go away? This is the point. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get on Twit. I'm like a little mini Leo. You I'm were... have 87 shows. <laughs> I'm going to talk about things. I'm going to go, I'm going to get a ham radio and an old camera and an iPad. And I'm going to like, I'm going to register minitwit.com. Uh, but you know what you need? You need what? baseball suspenders. Oh, Pitchers see? and catchers are reporting on my braces. <laughs> I need those. Nice, huh? Hold, yeah, hold, yeah. Especially for they people of my younger age, hold up their britches. Yeah, keep, it's keep nice. Keep britches up. Nice to hold up the britches. So uh, people are noting this is episode 500 of this little program. We've been doing this for quite some time and, uh, and wondering, well, why aren't you doing something like, where's the cake? Uh, we are, <laughs> but, the, but the reason we're not doing it today is because next month is the 10th anniversary of the very first twit. So April 19th, we are, that's when we're going to do all the celebrating. I figured 500, 10th anniversary, let's do 10th anniversary. So 10 years We've been doing this show. The first tweet was April 17th, 2005. And all of the original cast members are coming back for that. So it'll be John C. Dvorak. It'll be Kevin Rose, Patrick Norton, David Prager. The only person I think who hasn't committed, Roger Chang. Roger Chang's a maybe. He, you know, he just had a baby. So. He's a maybe because he had a baby. <laughs> exactly. So that's, I just saw uh, him in Barcelona. Yeah, you know, Roger's, Roger's holding out. 
I think he's holding out for more money. You got some that special gift, Uncle Leo. You got some that that little baby rattle, mm. you know, to entice him out. Mm -hmm. Some Cheerios. There you go. So anyway, that's why this is. This, I mean, this is a special show, but this is why we're not doing a big party or anything. Uh, and also, the directors' chairs didn't come, and the and the crown is missing. So as soon as we have to wait for everything to arrive. So uh, I guess we should start. You know, tomorrow is the Apple Watch event or something, Spring Forward. Uh, we'll certainly talk about that. But I think we should probably start with what happened because, frankly, we don't know much about what's happening tomorrow. But we do know what's happened in the past, and that's Mobile World Congress. And it just happens. Miriam Joar is just back from Barcelona. First of all, was it fun? It's always a fun show. It's a busy show. It's harder than CS in many ways because you have to jump around the whole city for a lot of the uh, press venues, the the so the just like CS, you have the actual show days, which are not really that big of a deal for the media. And then you have the days before the show when, uh, you know, all the press conferences happen, like the Galaxy S6 launch, the HTC M9 launch on Sunday, uh, March 1st. Um, that's the stuff you have to run around the whole city for. And, and you know, you, you know, that's not the only two that happen that day. So it's, it's a great show. It's really crazy. I had a really good time, as always. Uh, a lot of really exciting announcements this year. Actually, Ian, you used to go. You don't. You didn't go this year. No, no, I I haven't been now since 2008 since I came over here. But I I was going back to it when it was still through GSM in Cannes. So it's wow. changed an awful lot. I remember those days. <laughs> oh yeah, it feels gladly forgotten. It feels to me now like this is in many ways more important than CES. Certainly, as mobile computing becomes more important, uh, and and no, really, there weren't many cell phone announcements in January in Vegas. Uh, they everybody said, well, let's we'll wait till till March. Well, yeah, I mean, if you actually announce a, a cell, it, it makes sense to do that because there's so many news announcements coming out in CES, and Mobile World Congress is the mobile show. Yeah. So um, I've got it's a bear pit out there. I have to say, much respect to you for doing it. <laughs> you must be exhausted. <laughs> is the show floor no, as big I, as CES? I, I, um, probably, I don't know. Is it, it's probably about as big. Uh, it's hard to tell because it's a different uh, venue, right? Um, now they've moved it to this new uh, space that is gigantic. It's bigger than the Las Vegas Convention Center, oh, wow. it seems. But it probably isn't because the Las Vegas Convention Center is one of the biggest in the world. Um, it's, it's big. And uh, you know what was interesting this year is this is the first time in many, many years that we've had that many launches of phones and devices at Mobile Congress. The trend in the past few years had been for at least Samsung and HTC and a few of the mainstream players like LG to launch their phones at their own press events separately and ahead of time or after Mobile Congress. Think Galaxy S5, think HTC One M8 last year. They did not launch at Mobile Congress. So this is the kind of a return to form. The GS2 was the last major phone that was launched at Mobile Congress. I didn't realize that. That, in the, that in the M7... Actually, let me think. The M7 or the One X, I can't remember. But not. It's been a while since the big players have launched anything major at Mobile Congress. And I guess if you're big enough, like Samsung, uh, that you can have your own events and the press will come. Uh, Apple is a good example. You don't really need to be in all the noise of something like Mobile World Congress. Um, it's convenient for us, though. It's very convenient. It's also a bit of a buyer's show as well. You know, just as with CES, if you've got a buyer's tag on, everyone wants to speak to you. And right. if you've got a press tag on, nobody wants to speak to you. <laughs> I mean, it, Mobile World Congress seems to be moving towards that being a buyer's show, but there's still a lot of decent tech out there. I mean, Samsung's launch seemed to go fairly well. Um, yeah, a huge improvement over it's previous the Samsung launch events. that I've ever seen. It was massive. I have never seen a press launch like that. The demo room was literally thousands of people. Wow. wow. Media people. They had a separate demo room for partners, which are the carriers and people. I have never seen anything like it. It was the biggest launch of, of all of the history of launches that I've ever attended. And, and thank you, Miriam, because we used your footage uh, uh, from that demo room last week on Twitter. We also used your footage of the M9 from their press conference. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to get you more stuff. But, that's uh, plenty. Those are, the two, those are the two yeah, phones I cared exactly. the most about. I think these were the big ones. And, you know, a lot of people don't know this because I've had some people tweeting at me saying, why aren't you covering this for Twit? Where's your coverage? I didn't go for Twit. I went for Mobile Geek because I'm a freelance uh, uh, tech reporter, tech journalist. So... My gig was with Mobile Geeks, and um, you know, I know you sent Mike there, and he got some really great coverage for you guys too. If you go so to our I special feeds, we we have three 
uh, full day coverage of uh, day one, day two, day three on the twit.tv slash specials. And of course, on our news shows, Mike uh, was, uh, uh, you know, right there uh, Skyping in and stuff. So, yeah, we, we had a lot of coverage, but I really appreciate what you did for us, too. That was really great. Oh, no problem. I, I you know, I just uh, do a lot of these hands-on videos. I can just wing them and put them together real fast. I told Jason that I figured the timing would be perfect, right? You had your show coming up and it was later that day, basically. Right. Yeah. So I was like, if I get this stuff uh, and I put it in a Dropbox and, and, you know, the press room is really fast internet. So I could upload that in like 10 minutes, which is exactly what I did. And all it went. Very well. So uh, I actually don't think the big event, big item there was a phone, but we're going to talk about that. I think the HTC Vive might be more interesting, but let's talk about the phones before we... I got to try it out so I can... Yeah, yeah, I want to get your impressions, but the S6 looks pretty good. Um, I was impressed that Samsung uh, kind of got off of its tone-deaf presentations. They didn't have the Broadway show. <laughs> oh, they that didn't... was awful with it. It was just Terrible. painful to watch. And, they, and it was also less sexist. Actually, three of the four presenters were women. Or two of the three percenters were women. It looked, it looked a little bit more professional all around, and I think the phone looks better than they've ever than any phone they've ever done. It's got a glass back and front. It looks more solid. You know, I'm sure it feels better too in your hand. I love um, that I edge. Yeah, I had an S5. It is and I, I had it for like a week. I loved Android. it. But... It is the most beautiful Android phone I've handled yet. Better than the M8. Better than the M8, but the M9 is the M9 itself. The new one is better than the M8, okay. and so it's it's a toss in terms of feel in hand. It's a toss between the M9 and the uh, the Six Edge in particular. Um, but I would say that in terms of like detail and design, I think the M9 still wins. But what to me brings the S6, the Galaxy S6, and the Galaxy S6 Edge kind of on top in a way is all the other things that they got right this year. They seem to have just completely nailed this phone um, in this incredible way, which we all know Samsung can do if they apply themselves. And now that they have the heat, you know, the fire under their butts, they actually are doing it. And it's incredible to see what they need to because the S5 was kind of a flop. <laughs> It was a turd. I've been calling the S3. <laughs> okay. no, Another this way to put my, it. I've been very, very public calling the S3, S4, and S5 a turd. The S2 was the last great flagship device from Samsung. Counting, and of all this, the Note 4 is by far the best one. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm carrying a Note 4. I, after, tr after going back and forth for a while with all the different uh, new flagship phones, including the Nexus 6, I ended up going back to the uh, Note 4. Owen, oh, why did you get rid of your S? You said you had it for a week, the S5. Um, one, somebody needed a phone, and I, I buy Aww. stuff like that just to test it out. Aww. So I was like, look, I'm not going to use it. I took it in the pool for like two days when I was with my kid, and I, took, I thought that was the coolest part of the phone. Because it was the waterproof. Don't take the new one yeah. in the phone. No, well, and that's the, the thing. The way it felt, it felt cheap, and that's the thing I didn't like about it. Like I felt yeah. like I was gonna personally break it at some point. And then once you with the water feature, I feel like you take that back off a couple times, get into the SD card and doing things. That seal is gonna wear out on you, and then you're beat. So what? this this new phone looks amazing though. It looks small though. I don't know whose hand that was. That was that's John that was Paul's Miriam's hand. hand. Or yeah, I have the, big the, hands. Uh, <laughs> She's <laughs> ladylike. Okay. It was, it does look a little small. It's only 5.1 inches. That's uh, for a f nowadays, yeah. that's small. <laughs> yeah, and that's funny to me. Like, it's like, okay. I, I like, what do you think, Miriam, edge or not? Um, absolutely. For me, it's edge, but I, I think it's very div uh, divisive. A lot of people, like, it's very polarizing. A lot of people pref much prefer the regular Galaxy S6 and some much prefer the edge. I think, um, personally, I think the edge feels better in hand. It has a bit more of that kind of sharp not sharp edge like the note 4 edge that was terrible it was really sharp this is um very nice in hand i think the galaxy s6 for me what i don't like it about it is that it feels i mean it it feels really premium right because all metal and glass but it doesn't look that much different than the galaxy s5 you know what i'm saying like yeah. it kind of looks boring it looks in the fact, s5 like was the uninspiring it, yeah right yeah, yeah. And so the iPhone 6 looks boring, even though it's beautifully made. The GS6 looks boring, and I guess Samsung's going for that kind of like on an inoffensive look. But with the Edge, they literally, apart from the pond, they really have kind of an Edge device. It, 
it is edgy. It feels and looks like they're really pushing the design envelope in a really significant way. And it is a complete gimmick. Don't get me wrong. But there is one thing about it that's great. And um, it's that, that, you know, a lot of Android apps that you swipe from this like this, you know, from both sides, like the Google Plus app is a good example. And that feels so incredible with that <laughs> curved screen. It's <laughs> like a marriage in heaven. Like, it's yeah. like, wow, perfect. Now I get why they've done the edge. Do you think Samsung, so the Note 4 or the Note is on uh, the fall release. They announced this uh, Note 4 to IFA in September. So presumably they'll do it uh, this fall for Note 5. Do you yeah. think the Note 5 will continue to have a removable back, removable battery SD card? Or are they... I have a feeling that that's they're going to kind of deal channel the note as a pro device yeah. and the gs the, the the s series as a as a kind of like a design centric and and flagship phone and as such i totally understand their choices of removing the the like nixing the removal battery and sd card slot look the iphone doesn't have removal battery and sd that's why I carry a Note 4. <laughs> you, it's, okay. well, Just because you know, the iPhone. That's exactly you, why I don't not, carry an iPhone. We're not the kind of audience that this phone is going after, right? right? right. Like, I have a Note 4 and I love it too, right? But I think that you have to understand where they're coming from. They're, they're, got, they're lunch eaten by Apple and others this year, and they're literally going straight for that for that market with it may even be somewhat gig, 64 desperate. gig, yeah. sorry, 32 gig, 64 and 128 gig right. devices, you know? Right. But well, this after is you saw this, after you saw the sales of Apple, you know, they're desperate for that market. Right. Um, the iPhone just blew everything out of water. So they need something to get in the market. My biggest problem when you just said the space and the phone that's dedicated with no SD card, I can't trust how much bloatware they're going to put on these phones because they, are they backing off on touch with? They put yeah, so much stuff on these phones. Bit. Yeah, I mean, this Note 4 doesn't have a lot of touch whiz on it. It's got a little touch whiz on it. So it still has touch whiz and it's still a pain in the <laughs> ass. Never to buy that photo. They, <laughs> they've, bundled, they've bundled a bunch of Microsoft apps, which is really interesting. Not a bunch, but just Skype, them. OneNote, and uh, OneDrive, just three. We The rumor not, was not they were going to do a lot more than that. Yeah, none of that matters, though. We still haven't talked about where it really makes these two phones absolutely incredibly awesome and blow away the M9 in, to smithereens. The and fingerprint. The, the, no, no, that, that's that's cool because that's like Apple. You don't have to swipe anymore. That's nice. It's the display and the camera, the camera in particular. Yeah. That display is unbelievable. If you see that display in person, you will like think you had brand new eyes installed. It's unreal. <laughs> and then, you know, just because they hadn't had enough fun yet with one of the best displays ever made, Quad HD 5.1, the highest DPI of any display. Well, let's curve it. Right. Like they didn't go 1080p for the Edge version. They went Quad HD. They curved that display that is unbelievable to me technically like this is like their way of saying i'm dropping the mic we've made the best display ever <laughs> in the history of smartphones i want to i want to see sk chin drop the drop the phone and walk off the stage. i want to see it yeah <laughs> actually don't drop that phone because i have a feeling with glass on the front the back and the side that <laughs> thing is just waiting to get broken i mean really you're gonna the first thing they're gonna tell you is it's new super ultra uh, yeah it's gorilla, gorilla glass Expo. 4 that's one better. Dynamite, everything yeah. proof. How is that? How is so? I I am kind of convinced with uh, fingerprint reading. I am really convinced that that's important. I works so nicely on the iPhone. I it, think it's dangerous. Uh, well, if you look at the uh, the court rulings on this, if you I yes. guess, get pulled over by the police, right. they can force you to use your fingerprint to right. unlock the phone, but they can't force you to give up a passcode. Password is something in your head. Whereas a fingerprint is physical evidence. So uh, this is the same thing as they can they can require DNA. They can't take a hair from you. Courts have ruled that that's not testi uh, self-incriminating testimony. Nope, it's a fingerprint. It's on your finger. Therefore, they can take it. But they ha the courts have ruled that something in your head you you are protected against self incrimination, so they they can't force you to reveal that. Although if you're going into Canada, oh, then apparently you're screwed. You're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, if you're pulled over by the border police within a hundred miles of the border, which covers about two thirds of the U.S. population, um, so you've got a hundred mile limit between you and the border where the border police can force you to unlock your gear. See, that's that's something, and that just happened in Canada. There's a there's a case going on right now. Um, they can. And apparently, the, your privacy protections 
are different if you're crossing a border. You don't have any. You have none. So yeah. they uh, required somebody to unlock his uh, phone. He said, what, no, what are you talking about? That's, that's private. And uh, he's actually uh, he's going to go to jail, I think, because of that. So that's something to be very aware of. But I don't think that's going to keep me away from it. I mean, I'm not so paranoid that I'm not going to get a fingerprint reader because the cops could make me do it. Well, I mean, as someone who travels across borders a fair bit, I always carry clean gear whenever I go. Right. When I, whenever I just go, just don't over bring the good. Yeah, that's right. But I mean, I fingerprints they're, they're great for convenience, but I just worry about the legal side of it. I feel like they're more secure. So when I'm using this uh, to unlock my phone instead of a passcode, I feel like that's more secure. It's biometric. If, if it's well implemented, it's it's going to be safer. If it's done well, I do. The problem I have with the Nexus gesture opening is that it leaves finger grease yeah. on the phone. Yeah. So if you yeah. hand your phone over to a cop, Dvorak's you've got to doing scrub that. it on your shirt oh, yeah, just to I make sure you're... you've got nothing there. Miriam, did you try the new so, touch uh, fingerprint reader in the... Um... I didn't get a, I didn't get a chance to try, but from people I've talked to who've tried it, it's basically like, just like the iPhone. It's instantaneous and it just works. See, that works so well that... So, uh, that makes a that, that's a big significant difference between this and the iPhone and the uh, and Note Four, for instance, where you have to swipe just like you did on an old Lenovo laptops and think that <sighs> and stuff. That's kind of a yeah. you got to do it just right. Yes, O N J J Stone. Me, oh, Doc. Yeah, let me just tell you something about this. Yes, Long story short, you, you haven't watched no spy movies, okay? If I want your password, you <laughs> have to stay alive if it's in your head. Otherwise, I cut your hands off and I take your password in the moment. <laughs> if they want to put it on a retinal scan, Again, I I'm not that worried. I'm much more worried you, you that my I'm, kids will unlock the I'm phone just, than a, the, the look, FBI will. Depending on what somebody's got on their phone, I'm not going to say myself in particular, but I'd just rather have you keep me alive so you get into my phone <laughs> as opposed to cutting off my thumb I, and getting into my I'm phone. Not I'm not Liam you know. freaking said, Neeson. You, I don't expect <laughs> somebody to say, we okay. You said, I don't know who you are. Like so many special secure skills. Secure is in here. This is secure. Oh, this come on. is not so secure. Anybody right. can get this. Okay. Hard to get up in this okay. day. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, so, I'm going to use so, fingerprint when I pay for my <laughs> potato chips at Whole Foods. I'm sorry. That seems good like to me. So there's a couple of things that we should talk about. We should definitely talk about the camera because that camera is, if you think the well, the demo, the demo was good. impressive, but I never trust a demo. They had side by side low light comparisons, no, both stills you, and video. Four, it's unbelievable, and you know why? Because f over 1.9. That's why. That's the only reason. It is that's the fastest a, lens on any flagship today. Yeah, there's plenty of f2 lenses. Yeah, but that's uh, quite a bit different. If you've ever used f1.9 versus f2. You'll know the difference. It's and about you know you're getting an extra like doubling in light. It's it's unbelievable. It's just it just makes such a difference. And then on top of that, you've got OIS 16 megapixel and one of the fastest fastest camera um, apps. Like it starts in 0.7 of a second. You can double tap the home key for it to start and. And it's instantaneous. Like you tap the shutter button, you get a picture. It doesn't matter what you do. It's like they're that really going after Apple. It's huge because there's a lot of phones including uh, quite a few Android phones where you touch the button and you wait. Yeah. It has manual controls as an option. It has um, it has um, tracking focus now, so you can tap on, on an object. And if the object moves like a car person, it'll continue tracking it, like live in the viewfinder. That's cool. So, I mean, it's really, it, they've, they've really gone crazy. I, I'm not a huge fan of Samsung usually, but I have to say, you know, the camera on the M9 is a huge disappointment. No OIS, 20 megapixels with really small pixels that are really noisy. Um, you know, so far hasn't impressed anyone, even though the rest of the phone is is gorgeous and wonderful. It's like uh, Samsung's just really nailed it this year. They've done everything right, except they're not waterproof, no removable battery and no micro SD. But that's a small compromise, in my opinion, compared to all the things they nailed. And I think this phone is going to sell like hotcakes. And I actually think, I mean, it's not going to dethrone Apple, no way. But it's certainly going to give Apple a bit of a run for its money. Isn't once it close, it though? I mean, isn't it? I know Apple's dominant, but isn't Android close? And isn't Samsung kind of close within 10 points of, uh, of Apple in terms of uh, adoption in the US? I haven't looked at it's the pretty close. numbers, but it's... It's the, pretty the Android close, market yeah. is flooded with other opportunities, too. That's the one thing that dilutes that whole conversation. But the, the one thing about the camera... Every time a new phone comes out, I hear about how great this camera is, and I read all the statistical things about how much better these cameras are than an iPhone. And everybody I know that uh, does phone camera shooting, they all use iPhones. And if you see anybody without one, some people buy an iPhone just to use it for their camera for that kind of stuff. That's because people are and cheap. 
That's because no, people are people, sheep. I'm telling you, people use a just use their camera. There are, the quality is better. No one, no one disagrees that there are better camera phones out there. The the Nokia uh, 1020. I think the 1520, like, arguably, and certainly the the. I'm talking uh, about for mass production, like yeah, because like people are sheeple. The S5 was supposed to be a better camera, and it did all that fancy stuff. Yeah, where I didn't like the S5. Could take 40 pictures, and but I like the Note 4. I really, I think the I Note 4 stuff, is very I gotta, good. I got to, I got to get it in my hand and see it. Yeah. I'm sure Note 4 is great for you. But Owen, you have, to, Owen, Owen, you have to, like I'm a person, I'm someone who became a blogger because of camera phones. Okay, so I, I actually started writing my own blog because I was absolutely fascinated by the concept of a phone being able to take pictures. And I've used every major camera phone since 2005. And I'm telling you, there's one thing that the GS5 didn't have and that many of the competing phones right now that are supposedly good, but I don't end up being good, don't have. And that's OIS and a fast lens. That is a killer combo right there. And the Note 4 is an example of that. The, the iPhone 6 Plus is an example of that. And you're gonna, we're going to get that out of the S6 and S6 Edge. They're going to be gonna, incredible shooters. And you will see. Um, I'm going to buy one on your word just to try that, it. Yeah, you better. And then give it to me, people, okay? Because you always give them away a week later, right? I do always give there's them away. Several, yeah. There's several other shooters out there that are really, really quite good because of the combination of a fast lens and NYS, you know? Um, and, and some of the Lumias and some of the LG phones, actually. Uh, but they're crippled. The, the I Lumia has a crippled by by delay by like. But uh, denim denim fixes that. I picture. put denim on my fifteen twenty. They eliminated denim, the delay. Yeah, denim is a lot. Denim is a lot better. Yeah. But but on the LGs, the problem is the software is crap. Yeah. So like the. How about the Sony? Is, isn't the, is isn't the Xperia so, supposed to be amazing with laser no, focus? No, they're not. Because no, the the so the G the the LGs are the one with laser autofocus. Oh yeah, yeah. The G three G three and, G3 the, has and the and that laser. works really well. Okay. The uh, the X, the Sony's are all missing OIS, which is incredible because they make the sensor in the Note Four. I know, <laughs> Sony makes the sensors for everything. So, so I don't get it. I mean, I've, have you I, seen? Don't get me wrong. I'll tell you, Apple knows how important this is. If you go to Apple.com right now, front and center, this new gallery of iPhone six photos, and they're uh, they're stunning. They're stunning now, yeah. uh, and most of these are coming from social uh, networks. Apple spotted them. And uh, and added them, and they're just—I mean, I've never seen these. These are DSLR quality. Now, some of these guys are pro photographers, uh, so and it shows you the eye is important. But this the is iPhone, iPhone six. The iPhone still has an edge over the GS six and the Note four, and that's it. The fact that they refuse to go more than eight megapixels. Right. That gives you large pixels yeah. that are even cleaner and less noise and then here's where apple blows everyone away it doesn't matter how good samsung's gs6 phone is going to be the software apple has the best camera app and camera software so you combine that with a fast lens and ois and now you have a really killer combo i use a G, uh, an iphone 6 plus right now and the pictures i'm taking with it blow my mind they're mm. really incredible and i'm a person who can take good pictures of almost any phone and it's like, they they make it so easy and seamless. It's it's amazing. I, but I do think that the GS6, like the Note 4, is going to impress a lot of people in terms of, of imaging. And it certainly sets the bar. It, one, it shows one thing Andy and Akko pointed time. out is that uh, if you know what your capabilities are, mm. you notice all of these are in fairly bright daylight, for instance. Yeah. If you know what your capabilities are, you can maximize. That one's not. That's the Eiffel Tower at night. But there's a lot of light there. You can maximize the capabilities by, by maximize the quality of the picture by knowing what your phone's good at and staying away from the stuff, maybe low light, for instance, that your phone's not so good at. And that's clearly here. But I have to say, these are amazing. We're gonna take a break. I don't. I think this. Uh, we won't know till March, April 10th, when this S6 comes out, and then we'll all get one, and then we can fight then. And I wanna, uh, I wanna see your pictures, Miriam. And I'll, sh if you show me yours, yep. I'll show you mine. <laughs> not you, oh doctor. I know not me. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing a Flyers shirt, ladies and gentlemen. Is that a personal uh, favorite of yours? Is he, any, or is it just any Philadelphia team you love? I have to rep Philadelphia in general. I'm not a hockey fan, so I just got this because I like jerseys. So if I ever go to a hockey game, it'll be a Flyers game first. Yeah. You haven't even been to a hockey game? No, my friend's supposed to take me, but I've been busy and it's been snowstormy. So I'm trying to go to a Rangers. Flyers Your mistake. Game. You should go to a fight. I went to a fight once and a hockey game broke out. It was an old joke. Bad joke. <laughs> Bad joke. Taking a break. Come back with more. Miriam Joar is here.
formerly of uh, Engadget fame, now uh, just uh, wandering around looking for work. Is that fair? She's gone. <laughs> well, we're, we're now she's wandering working around looking on for connectivity. Skype connection. Yeah, yes, we're working, working on, on that. Connectivity. Miriam's Skype connection. We will get that uh, better. Uh, also from the register, register.co.uk. The fabulous Ian Thompson. Always great to have you here. Oh, it's very nice to be described as fabulous. Thank fabulous. you. Fabulous. <laughs> you you know, Dame Enda is retiring. There might be a place for you. Uh, I always look lousy in makeup. It just doesn't work <laughs> for me, you know. <laughs> and Owen J.J. Stone. He is O doctor. And no one knows what he does. It's something about fresh web design. Fresh can be. Fre fresh. He's fresh. Is that Febreze? <laughs> You're spraying yourself with Febreze? Gotta, gotta stay fresh, Uncle Leo. Not recommended. <laughs> Or is it Windex, so, um, like uh, my uh, my Greek wedding, my big fat Greek wedding? It, it, it's, it's for Breeze. It's for Breeze. Okay, just checking. Our show today brought to you by Fresh. How did you know? Fresh books. I know everything, Uncle Leo. Can you I smell? Know. Can you smell the freshness at freshbooks.com slash twit? Fresh books is a great solution for anybody who's uh, a freelancer, a small business. If you're sending out invoices, you know that is painful come the end of the month. I used to hate that. On the 30th. In fact, I've, I've told this before. Forgive me for repeating myself. But I got to the point where I just put it off till the next month and the next month. I literally submitted five invoices to Rogers at once. And their accountant said, you, you, what do you, what, what? You're, cr what? she was mad. Nice, though, when I, and actually that's when Amber told me about uh, FreshBooks. FreshBooks.com slash twit. It lets you make beautiful, professional looking invoices uh, and, and update them and send them out almost automatically. In fact, they do have an automatic invoicing feature. You can, uh, if you do time and hours, use their smartphone uh, apps on Android or iOS to automatically record and input them into the invoice. You can use the same apps to keep receipts, take pictures of receipts, add your time and expenses. It's so great. It Travel and expenses, it's so great. I am a big fan. One of the very first kind of modern websites I ever use, and they've just gotten better and better and better. Billing clients has never been easier and if you ever need help great support right from their office uh and support is free forever so i want you to try it it is built for growing businesses in fact on average fresh book customers double their revenue in the first 24 months and get paid an average of five days faster it's because they make it easy for your clients to pay you if uh, you have a slow pay client that happens FreshBooks has automated reminders that make it make it easy. You don't have to make that awkward phone call. It is just great. CNET says FreshBooks has a refreshingly straightforward approach. And I agree with that. It's very clean, very straightforward, very easy, and yet very powerful. Well, I want you to try it free with no obligation. 30-day free trial. FreshBooks.com slash twit. And uh, all I ask, if, if they ask you where would you hear about us, just put this week in tech. FreshBooks.com slash twit. So we called Miriam back on uh, Google Hangouts now. Is that what we're going to use? We're going to see how that works. Yeah, we'll Skype try. was failing is, us. Is it better? Uh, it's the picture's not as good, better? but that doesn't matter. I want I want the audio to be good. Yeah. One two one two one. Yeah, we'll two. see. One we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, the uh, you guys coming in are pretty bad too. I don't, your image. We on don't my care. End come, I don't care. It doesn't matter. You know what I look like. <laughs> it's yep. not getting any worse. So I thought the uh, okay. So we we mentioned the uh, S six. Before we get to the the HTC VR helmet, was there anything else that no that, that got underreported in Barcelona, uh, Miriam? Is there anything you thought was really interesting? Um, the bunch of interesting Android Wear watches, uh, the uh, LG um, Urbane and Urbane LT watches were pretty hot, um, and then there is uh, the Huawei's uh, Android Wear watch. All of these were kind of premium-looking uh, metal watches with uh, gold and silver-like finishes. Um, pretty high-end, pretty nice. Um, the thing about the Huawei one was that it's got a display that is round but doesn't have the flat tire of the Moto 360 and has very little bezel, which I thought was awesome. Uh, finally, somebody's cracked that nut, so that's cool. Um, but the LG ones, you know, they look uh, they look really great. They're kind of like a, an LG Watch R, uh, G Watch R on steroids in terms of the design and the quality of the materials and the build. And then there's an LTE version that doesn't run Android Wear because Android Wear doesn't support LTE, doesn't support being an independent um, self-connected device, as it were. And that one runs a variation of WebOS. It's very much the same really? watch that we saw Audi show at CES. So it's interesting that 
the Urbane LT is is an evolution of the Audi Watch from CS, like a further advancement on that, and with WebOS and LT, and still pairs with your phone for notifications, but it can run standalone and take phone calls and all that. And then the Urbane non LT is an Android Wear device that's very similar to the G Watch R, but much more premium. So these will come out very soon, and um, I'm sh- I'm probably gonna get my hands on some because I got good connections with LG, as you know. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, just I love my Motorola uh, 360, but I have to think that tomorrow, yeah, anybody who got their watch out in the last couple of weeks just like went, <laughs> whoosh, we made it. Oh, because tomorrow the world changes, just as the world changed when the oh. iPod was. I you think that's hype? Honestly, I'm when, just trying to make it up to the no, people no, I called cheap earlier. We are honestly not going to know because what Apple will give us tomorrow is the basic tech specs and all the journalists who've had it for two weeks beforehand to try it out will post reviews about how wonderful Apple is <laughs> because they're, lose, they're going to lose access to the company right. if they Walt don't. Mossberg will love it. I, I'm not going to use the word whore, but it's just... <laughs> um, the best watch Apple's ever made. We'll uh, hear that. Oh, come on. When, when, I'm sorry. When... Uh, you know, you the know, only watch the, Apple's ever no, made. No, that, now you're getting nitpicky. The best watch we've ever made. <laughs> the only watch we've the ever made. The thinnest watch. Which makes it. We've the, ever it's made. It's not the thinnest watch. It's a little fat porker. I wish it was No, thin but it's still sexy, the thinnest watch they've ever. It's a little, it is a little, it looks like a little gold pillow on your wrist. Yes, it is. It is uh, from a fat person, it's a chubby thing. And I'm used to my little sleek. Sexy Apple devices, and now I got to go deal with this fat thing on my. No, wrist. but if they didn't start fat, then next year they couldn't say it's the thinnest watch it's, it's the we've thinnest. ever made. We've we, we reduced the size by forty-two point four percent. Now uh, you can actually lift your arm to look at the thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> All right, I didn't want to get it. I didn't want to get off on the watch thing, um, but uh, we will. We'll talk about the Apple Watch. I want to finish Mobile World Congress. I'm a big now. I'm on record saying I like uh, augmented reality. I'm excited about Hololens. Yeah, me too. And I'm less excited about virtual reality, which has been getting all the press because of Oculus Rift. But uh, HTC announced something they call the Very Immersive Visual Experience (VIVE) Vive. Mm -hmm. And uh, people were Vlad Zavav of The Verge says, "I wore the Vive and didn't want to take it off." You wore it. What do you think? It's unbelievable. It is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. This Better is to than me the, the Oculus. The it's the highlight of the show. Uh, it's incredible to me that it's HTC and Valve. Um, I mean, not Valve, but HTC more. No, but Valve uh, is, Valve is the pulled. is is involved, aren't they? Yeah, of course. No, yeah. but I'm saying it's HTC really. It's HTC's product with Valve's technology. Yeah. So it's impressive to me that HTC, the underdog, just came out with something that literally blew every journalist's mind. A market they're not um, even, uh, they've never been in. Exactly. And I think this just shows that they're thinking forward because they yeah. know that they can't, I, I don't think they'll ever get back in the lead in smartphones. They'll stay relevant for a while, but it's going to be a challenge for them. So this is their way of saying, look, we, we're thinking beyond smartphones. Oh, you know, it. we're, look. they also did a wearable <laughs> called the, look, the re Look at this. I'm sorry. You're Look at carrying this. that amount of Look junk on your face? <laughs> Seriously. Is, I, I believe Valve is involved in this because this looks like that creepy thing that would get onto your face in half life. <laughs> so, so wait, guys, you have to understand. First of all, this is not a uh, this is a developer product, and it's not meant to be worn when you walk around outside. This is a VR helmet. You you wear it when you're inside in in your house. Um, you and it connects to a PC. So this is the thing people don't understand. This is not a standalone device. This is a PC-connected peripheral. Um, it will have a, wire, a couple of wireless um, uh, controls that go along with it. and um, Like joysticks kind of or like uh, Nintendo nunchucks or something? Yeah, they look very similar to that. And it's up in the air whether the final product will be wireless or not in right. terms of the, 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 the VR part. But... Let's put it this way. I've tried Oculus and I've tried uh, Gear VR and I've tried a bunch of different uh, products. And, you know, they they were kind of wow, but not like I, I want to stay in this universe and I, I want to experience I don't know. This, I, this rhetoric this. sounds exactly like the rhetoric we heard when people first tried the Oculus Rift. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> well, I'm telling you this. This was unbelievably good. First of all, nobody got sick. I've talked to every single one, women, men, everyone, nobody got sick. Okay, that's and a that, big deal because I get sick with the Oculus. Of demo, 
And the reason for that is because instead of having a single display, they have separate displays for the left and right, super high res, they're 1200 by 1080 each, and they refresh at 90 hertz. That's, wow. the, that's the key point. And that so makes a big when difference. When you look at a white surface inside the VR universe, you do not see any flicker. Also, the motion sensing is so accurate that you have no lag whatsoever. So um, when I was using the two controllers and I was touching them together in the virtual world, I could actually feel them touch in the physical world exactly the way I saw them in the virtual world. So the accuracy of the positional system they're using, which is laser-based, is really, really good, which is another reason why you don't get sick. Um, so they've really done their homework, and you know it, you can tell Valve's worked on this for a long time. So you're going to say, why Valve and HTC? Well, it's very simple. HTC and Valve got together to do this in the, starting in the summer, and they now already have basically a, a, a developer unit. And that's because HTC is a Taiwanese company. They can design and manufacture products very quickly because they have that expertise. And conversely, Valve has a ton of expertise in creating virtual worlds, um, on, of course, in video games, and, and a way to monetize and distribute these through Steam. So this is a huge deal. I think, that, you know, remember, I'm an ex-video game developer. I worked in video games for 15 years. I actually got interviewed by Valve a few years back. I didn't take the gig because they're a bunch of crazy workaholics, but I love them dearly. Um, but the point is that, that I think this is significant. I think this is significant because it's the first thing that everybody unanimously agrees. There's no ifs or buts. This is really good. And two, it's a really kind of marriage made in heaven. These two companies are five minutes apart, their headquarters. So it's like it just seems like a great fit. And for HTC, it's a great way to move forward. And Valve needed a vehicle, you know, after the after, after you know, they've been working on this stuff forever, and they can't, they couldn't scale, they couldn't manufacture this stuff. So they say so it's going to be know. in stores by Christmas. Yeah, they want to launch it by the end of 2015. It's so just for it's just for gaming, right? Yeah, and you have to understand. Or is it watching gonna, movies? Am I going to watch movies on this? No, I don't think it's worth it. Uh, you could, but it's not interactive. The thing about this that's unique is that it, it's really designed to be used in a, in, a, in like, you, you're going to have to make space in your house to use it. Ideally, you need a room that's 15 by 15 feet. <laughs> no, no, seriously. This is, like, I don't think it's going to be a mass-produced thing. I think it's going to be a niche product for a while. But but the reason for it is that, you you know, the games are optimized so that you can walk. And, and as you get too close to the real wall of your this staircase... seems like a really bad idea. It kind, of, it kind of fades in this grid in front of you that shows you how far you can go without hitting oh, something. All right. And it's really, really well done because I never, ever, single time hit anything. And um, it kind of fades in and out really seamlessly. But, like, look, you know, I was not impressed with Oculus Rift ever. Okay? So... Take it with a grain of salt if you want, but this blew my mind. This was so good, I was like, wow. I've seen the future, this is it. What, so uh, this is going to be the best Minecraft experience ever. <laughs> no, HoloLens <laughs> is going to be like, yeah. I just HoloLens, HoloLens, HoloLens is made Minecraft. by Microsoft, and Microsoft's going to make... Life 3. It's for, it's, it's for immersive gaming, and that's the difference. So Minecraft is far from immersive, even if you like... <laughs> I, I'm just saying, you, you want to sit there and build blocks? Hey, I built my yeah, block. But that HoloLens movie, house, I think I, people who played yeah. with the HoloLens in uh, Minecraft I've, were very impressed. I, 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 I used the HoloLens, and I was... I gave an embarrassing interview on this on this channel about it f literally five minutes after I'd used it. Because you were excited. I was I was literally blown away that the stuff they got on Cur on the Curiosity cameras on Mars was it was the puppy's now, packet. It the Mars just, stuff is the what? Uh, it's the, the dog's puppy's packet. It's a nice way of saying the dog's bollocks. But <laughs> yes, it's, uh, <laughs> is that a good thing? Oh yeah, okay, bollocks is bad. Checking. Dog's bollocks is good. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Don't even ask me I have why. so much to learn. <laughs> um, <laughs> I completely lost track of what... It, it strikes me that AR is good for user interface and yeah. VR is good for immersive gaming experiences. The world, they can coexist. Some immersive gaming, because with VR... And, and Miriam, you pointed to this. With VR, moving around is a problem. So the kind of games... I was at GDC this, this week. The kind of games that they, they really want to get this into are ones where you're sitting in a spaceship like Elite or where you're sitting in a racing car. If you're doing a first-person shooter, 
then it's, it's not so good because you want to run. Exactly. So, so actually, Boom. this is what's interesting about about Vive is that the idea is that they want you to be moving. They want you to be on your feet and have this 15 by 15 That's a recipe space for disaster. that the game guides you through that doesn't let you, you know, basically it shows you where the limits of your real physical world are so you don't run into things. But they don't want you to be sitting down as much gonna, as what we've seen Who's going to dedicate so a 15 by 15 room because you have to dedicate it because there can't be any furniture or coffee tables or anything yeah. in this room. It has to be hey, an empty... Microsoft has a that problem question, with them. That's put that not my problem. Thing. This is a marketing question. There's going to be some crazy... It's a practical, It's anyway. a real world question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How much is it going to be? Did they say? No, nobody knows. I figured probably, you know, if, uh, uh, it needs a high-end PC to run, so you need a PC... Add to that probably another thousand or two for the and for the gear. I don't know. They already have one game developer, Valve, involved. So presumably Valve will develop Half Life. No, but Valve 4 or is something. like their partner. It's not that they're just involved. Yeah, yeah no, I understand. The but, they, but what I'm saying is there will be games that use it because Valve will make sure of oh, that. Of course it is. Yeah. Well, that's how I said Half Life Three, guys. I mean, think was about Vive it. at Wouldn't the GDC? Uh, no, they didn't have the. They they shipped them all over to but to Barcelona, which was really annoying. No, no, they did not. That's not really? true. They had a whole bunch of vibes at GDC. I wasn't there, but I. They know were hiding them from me in that case. That they said, "Oh, yeah, oh Ian to... thinks it's the dog's bollocks. We don't <laughs> till we can figure out if that's good or bad." That's interesting. Well, in fact, I went round there fact, and asked, I, and they were saying all no. The demos that, all the demos at Mobile Congress were labeled GDC demo. So they were actually showing it at GDC far be, more than at Mobile. It'd be Congress. very goody. I'm on that blacklist. It'd be Marvelous. very telling. Yeah, I guess it'd be very telling if they showed it at Mobile World Congress and not at the Game Developer Conference. Well, you'd. Th I mean, this is why we went around the stand, but the, we were, yeah. we weren't seeing we weren't seeing anything there. But I mean, I mean, I'm with you. It does appear to be much better than the Oculus in terms of the the kind of the the experience that it gives, and so much better than than Samsung's version of this, which is just. Blocky as all hell. Samsung's version is just basically a Note 4 in a thing. Yeah, well, Google it's kind gave of you like cardboard Google Cardboard. For that. Yeah. yeah. So we could yeah. we could throw that out. That's not really in the in the mix. We're talking about you know kind of interactive, real time, immersive gaming, and it is Oculus. It's funny because Facebook spent a lot of money on Oculus Rift, and they've been scooped by HTC of all people. Yeah, well, I'm, you know, the thing about Oculus is that their technology can scale, right? So, so they, all they have to do is improve the resolution of the display, right. refresh rate, and a bit more accuracy on the positioning, and then they're probably going to be able to catch up. But the thing that does make uh, Vive unique is these two controllers as well. Mm -hmm. It really does give you the ability to, like, pick up things in the world. Um, the controls are very similar to the Valve controller, the one for the Steam uh, PC. So, uh, in the sense that they're like, if you took that and broke it in half, basically, and held both halves, that's basically what you have. Two, two D-pads where your thumbs are, trigger buttons on the bottom, and you can squeeze the controls as well uh, to make them click. So, um, yeah, it's, re it's, it's really be, well done. Is the market hardcore gamers? Yeah, I think so. I think so, right? and, and also, you know, they're going to they're gonna try to figure out and see, like, how... How will it get accepted by people? You're right. This is going to be a, a very niche product. I mean, 15 by 15 foot room. I don't have a room that big in my place. They're all 12 by 12. Basically, it's, it's Notch, Bruce They're Willis, sell it in beta and Shaq. And get people to, to, to tell the rest of the world how much they love it. Yeah. You know, because yeah. even by the end of the year, the market's Actually, probably not know, even ready for things, that. One of the things that came up with all the reporters I talked to at Mobile Congress who got the demo, who were all amazed, was... How do they market this? Because right. you have to experience it. So you need to create some sort of studio where people can go and try it out because then they'll blow, be blown away and buy it perhaps. But but until then, it's kind of like you guys are hearing me say it's amazing, but you don't believe me because you haven't experienced <laughs> it. Right? I, I, it's not and even so, I don't believe I you. Believe you. I, just I hear believe 15 you. By 15 room. I hear 15 by 15 room and I hear... They want me to stand up and move, but don't move. But and I, I, you said one game that got me excited. But then I think, well, are there going to be other games or enough games to justify the price point? Mm. There's not. It's not you. I believe that it's awesome. I believe it's probably the best thing you've seen on the market. I believe that you've you've sold that part of it. It's just all the other aspects of it as a regular person or people in the market. Like, is it even going to happen? Could it work with Soon. a PlayStation Four or an Xbox One, or does it have to have a PC? No, right now it's PC only, but it could theoretically. The technology is not limited to a PC. Because that's where I mean, people are spending money, right? Is the hardcore? Well, I guess they're PC gamers are the hardest core of hardcore gamers. Yeah, I was say, I'm nothing, so. nothing stops Valve from coming out with kind of a, a Redux, you know, 
Um, We're talking um, thousands of like dollars. Like to evolve the technology. We're yeah, talking I thousands mean, of dollars. It's going to evolve. But the thing is, all of this stuff going on right now around VR, the kind of the rebirth of VR, is eventually somebody will figure out how to make it work and make it a more uh, acceptable thing and a more manageable and marketable thing. But this, what we're seeing happening here with HT and Valve needed to happen. Because Here's what it is. The quality wasn't is. good enough. This now is, the quality this is, is the, good enough. This is the surface table. This is a big Thanks. ass. This is something, and you're going to see it in casinos. You're going to see it at Dave and Buster's. You're, Correct. You're not going to see it in people's living rooms. This is the surface in fact, table. In fact, when you first get into the VR world, when you first put the 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 headset on and you plug the headphones into the headset and put the headphones on and hold on to the controller the first thing you see is the holodeck from star trek very yeah. much the same yeah. an empty room with lines and you're like holy crap i'm in the holodeck and then they kind of fade in the world and it feels so unbelievably real it it's it's just that's the thing that blew my mind compared there's to some, um, to oculus there's a slight it difference was, which was, is the holodeck you didn't have a face crab on <laughs> of course not. But that doesn't matter because well, Jordy the face did. Crap is Jordy had a face crab. Yeah. No, he had a hollow lens. <laughs> Some, somebody the, had the something. The VR headset that I tried is was a prototype, and it was super lightweight and and very comfortable. And within minutes, I didn't even know I had it on. It does it solve gone. the problem, though, if you see it in places like uh, you know ESPN Sports Zone, and you play it there. That's how people can get excited about it, saying, oh, but it, if it doesn't yet feel like a home product. But you know what? I want immersive VR, mm -hmm. right? Wouldn't that be great? I want to be able to go to Paris and pretend I'm there. And Up to a point, I mean, I'm, I'm curious, Miriam, in terms of did you have to have it plugged in for power or could you actually run this off a battery? Because I think that's going to be key if you uh, are going to be No, this around. was all plugged in. This is connected to a PC. There were a bunch of wires, but there was also a prototype. They, they As I said early on uh, when we started discussing it, for sure, the controls will be wireless. Mm -hmm. The uh, big question mark is on the uh, developer release, the headset will not be wireless. It will be connected by a single cable to your PC. But on the uh, there's talk of the final version, the retail version, to be potentially wireless in terms of the headset yeah. as well. Yeah, you see, this is How the problem HoloLens. Do that, I don't know. HoloLens, the, de the, uh, the you know, demo that they showed was wired. But didn't they say it was going to be a wireless device? Well, I mean, during the keynote... It's a, PC, it's a standalone PC in the HoloLens. Well, that's what they said. But, I mean, when you were using the HoloLens kit, you had to carry a battery pack with yeah. three pa three fans going right. nine to the dozen on there. You had to wear the special headset. Now, at the, at the keynotes, they showed the sort of black right. headset which sat around. They wouldn't let us touch it, but they did have one in a glass case. It has no air sockets on there. So when it comes to cooling, if they're running three processes like they say they are, not going to work. It Unless turns they, out your skull is an excellent uh, cooling device. The uh, heat's going to go right into your head. Oh, that's going to sell well. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, also battery life. Unless they've right. got some astonishing power density battery advances, then it's never going to work for more than a couple of minutes. I would, I would love to see immersive virtual reality. I think it's more for gaming. I, I think both have a, have a role. I think augmented reality is, is maybe the future of a user interface. You're not, I mean... You know, when you're putting on a Vive or an Oculus Rift, you, you've sealed yourself out from the rest of the world. That's a little bit of an issue. Anyway, let's take a break. Come back with more. Because guess what? Screw all that stuff. I'm buying an Apple Watch tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> give me one while you're at it, Uncle. You Leo. want one? All right, I'll trade you. Yep. You give me the S6, I'll, get the, uh, I'll, I'll give you the Apple Watch. That sounds like a fair deal, actually. I need that solid gold Apple Watch. Though. Oh, you want the edition? <laughs> oh, aren't we special? Yeah. You didn't state which one, Uncle Leo. I'm yes. just saying, you never have to buy me another present for the rest of your life. I know, really. <laughs> it's like my daughter. That's what my daughter said. If you give me an Audi for my birthday, you won't have to ever get me another present. It's a fair deal. It seems fair on the face of it. Our sh <laughs> this is why I have cats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't have children. My God, don't have children. Yes. Cats, cats, cats. Don't have children. Uh, personal <laughs> capital, ladies and gentlemen gives you amazing, award-winning financial tools, unbiased advice, a transparent view of your investments, so you can make sure that you have money for retirement. A lot of investors are actually wasting retirement years with high fees and hidden costs using traditional brokers, mutual funds with big loads that you don't even know about. That, that Those costs add up. You could literally have uh, run out of money before you uh, in your retirement, before you kick. Personal capital is free. It's secure. I set it up two years ago. I love it. It's already helping more than 700,000 investors just like me. 
identify and eliminate high fees, manage and grow your wealth. It's your money. You want to keep more of it. it look, you just try it right now. Go to personalcapital.com slash twit. You can, you can at least use these tools. You can use them for budgeting. You can see, you can rebalance your investments. If you wish, you can get unbiased advice too. If you uh, have track accounts worth one assets worth one hundred thousand dollars or more on the personal capital dashboard, they'll give you a, th a free thirty minute review with their very nice advisors. It's not it's not a pitch. It's not a sell. They'll literally look at your goals, your risk tolerance, your time horizon, and they'll help you craft a retirement plan that works just for you. This is something that's unique to everybody, and getting advice like this is really worth its weight in gold. Costs you nothing at personalcapital.com. Personal Capital gives you total clarity, total transparency to make better investment decisions right away. For a free, no-obligation portfolio consultation, all you have to do is link 100,000 uh, or more in assets on the Personal Capital dashboard. It's easy to do, and I can tell you the results will benefit you for the rest of your life. As soon as you link those accounts, with 100000 or more in assets, personal capital will contact you. And no obligation, by the way, but if you wish, for a free 30-minute portfolio consultation. You just set up your free account, personalcapital.com slash twit. And I really want to thank them, not only for their support of twit, but also for helping me. I've been using them for a couple of years, rebalanced. It's nice they have an Android Wear app that will tell you, you know, if the market took a dive. He goes, quick, <laughs> get into bonds. Uh, so it's very, it's actually a really cool... Uh, thing personalcapital.com slash twit can i get you some water got some thank all you. right can i get you a I'm dog's gonna, bollocks <laughs> no. No, thank you <laughs> side note i've been using personal capital i like personal capital do you oh that's nice thank yeah. you owen would you like um these are only available in the irish republic <laughs> Tatoes, oh, cheese and onion well the irish do know their potatoes so they do <laughs> it's so weird i didn't know this but the republic of ireland has mm. one form of tato and the rest of ireland as another. Ah, uh, you see, the history of Ireland is ridden with bloody tatoes. So, no, Apparently, it's just, uh, <laughs> there's a tato schism. So, uh, <laughs> interesting. Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that odd? Salt and vinegar doesn't seem to be that popular over here for some reason. Oh, I but do the, not get the Brits love it. Aren't they great? I oh, love salt and vinegar chips. Exactly. All right, we're all going to have salt and vinegar. That, that might be a Northeast thing. Everybody I know out here loves salt and mm. vinegar. Yeah. I introduced it to a California friend, and he was like, mm. You're trying to poison me? It's because yeah. of fish and yeah. chips, right? You put your malt vinegar mm. all over your chips. That's right. Yeah, people right. out here love it. In fact, after this podcast, I'm going to get myself a bag of salt and vinegar chips. Mm. I, I've been seeing that for 10 days If now. you can get to Ireland, get the Tato brand. I just got back from Europe. I'm not going back for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to be in South by in less than 48 hours. You Are know? you kidding? I'm, no. I'm like, I was, it's a month of travel, basically. Wow. I was at a wedding in Vancouver and then but two South, days here and then back. South by Southwest is a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, it's always fun. You, I remember you crowd, you were like crowd surfing once. At some uh, at some event yeah. a few years back. Yeah, I actually have that? the uh, I have the world record for longest live streamed crowd surf. That was at uh, the Dignation event at Stubbs Barbecue, South by oh, Southwest. You, you haven't seen this? No, I haven't this seen a, this. I think I should. Is this an official thing from like the Guinness? Book there of were world people Records. there, not from the Guinness Book of World Records, from another Book of World Records. <laughs> I think it was the dog's bollocks jackets. book. Of, yeah, they they were different people, but they gave me a plaque. Um, so and, it's legit. And yeah, and I blame I blame <laughs> Kevin Rose and Alex Albrecht because they talked me into doing this. And then later I found I out. I remember this well. I found out later this is actually quite dangerous. Meatloaf did it at a concert and they dropped him. <laughs> yeah. You have more support out here, I guess. Sorry, if you see does. Meatloaf flying through the air towards no, you, you get out of the way. Yeah. You not stand That's there. what happened. That's what happened. The crowd moved out of the way. He left off the stage, and the crowd just said, no, not me. Um, <laughs> Noping so was, the hell out of that. This was a great, lively crowd. South by Southwest is really a party, isn't it, Miriam? I mean, that's what it's all about. It's yeah. a party. Yeah. So it's, I'm it's, holding it's, yeah. the shot you're seeing is me. I have a camera with a live view pack, uh, and I'm holding it on a staff like Gandalf. And then, and see that <laughs> backpack? And then... That's the impressive part. The, the backpack didn't get ripped off. The wires didn't get ripped out. No, somebody tweeted, though, that he you. squeezed my butt and he liked it. So that <laughs> was a little weird afterwards. But uh, that, now the shot you're seeing, I'm actually being passed from hand to hand. <laughs> that, was good grief. that is a new, as a world record for the longest live streamed crowd surf. 
No one's ever tried it before. That's why. <laughs> and we'll, or will, nor will anyone ever do it again. Apple introduces the longest crowd surf ever. It's the longest <laughs> crowd surf we've ever done. Lighter than we've ever done. It's amazing. Half the Leo at twice the speed. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. That's I can't believe just, I did I that. I do remember this so well. What yeah. year was that? Was uh what, 2011? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. I'm well, sure I could 11. find out if I looked at the... Uh, two th I think 11. 11? It goes to 11. It's 10. 2010. 10. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm being manhandled at that point. And it's, uh, they put me, they, I, I literally went like 100 feet over on, hand over hand. It's a wild event. Anyway, uh, nothing of import happens at South By. It's just fun. Is that right? It's fun and it's good networking. It's good for, That's yeah. It's networking. But we Stuff that's happens. why we stopped covering it, because nothing it wasn't like there was news there. Now, people launch their apps, and I feel like launching your app there is the worst place in the world to well, do not it. Not anymore, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Because yeah. Facebook and Twitter both took off at South By. Uh, then, for a few years after that, everybody said, oh, well, we're going to be oh, the man, app. Was, Instagram did, people too. Waited not not all Facebook, year, like, uh, oh, Foursquare. Dylan. It was Twitter, yeah, then it was Foursquare. I don't, was Instagram was big at, Instagram? Uh, maybe? I thought it was Instagram, too. Apps are so dead. Apps are over. It's over. Apps are dead. Apps are dead. I agree. It's all about the watch. <laughs> I do feel like apps have kind of run what do you their put, course. Well, what do you put on the there. watch, though, Uncle Leo? What? What do you put on the watch? Peanut butter? No, I don't know. What do I put, put, put on? on the watch, right? Oh, don't no, 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 watch. no. Until this fall, the Apple Watch will not support standalone apps. You put apps on the phone, and then if the app has a watch component, it will communicate, just like Android Wear, it'll communicate with the watch and and then the watch will have a thing that it does that's related to the app. It's just like when the iPhone came out, so they were it took them eighteen months to actually yeah. work out people would like to put apps on here besides yeah. what you say is okay. Thank so you. So it's kind of silly to talk about the Apple Watch because tomorrow's the event. And we're gonna stream it live and talk over it and everybody's gonna yell at us and say, Shut up, and then we're gonna say, Go watch the Apple event yourself if you don't like what we're saying and you know, it's the usual. So I will not be <laughs> streaming it from there because I'm not invited, but Renee Ritchie will be there from Mac Break Weekly, Serenity Caldwell, Jason Snell, and we'll get them the next day in Mac Break talking about it. I don't think Apple will have a watch there. They've said already that April is when the watch will be for sale. But the f most fun speculation is how much it will cost. Oh. And, the, and there, you know, remember when the iPad was announced? I think Apple seeded rumors that it was going to be a thousand bucks. Everybody said, "Oh, yeah, it's to be a thousand bucks." Apple, knowing that in fact it would be almost a thousand bucks, but they seeded those rumors so that when Steve Jobs said, "And it's four hundred ninety-nine dollars," you could hear an audible gasp. That, by the way, is the last event I ever was invited to. But you could hear it, people in the auditorium go, oh, four ninety-nine." Well, bear in mind, half the people in the auditorium are Apple staff, <laughs> right? So, you know, yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's the biggest thing when, when you say when you say something earlier about Samsung here and crickets, like they don't have fanboys in an army waiting to clap at every. <laughs> yeah. You said uh, Apple like, loads like a queue of claps. Apple they loads know when to clap. the first row with former vice presidents and other dignitaries. The second through, like, fourth row at the Yerba Buena Center will be Apple employees who worked on the watch. Mm -hmm. And then I do think there are other Apple employees in there. Oh, they're all around the back. All, and you just, to get, them, so, just to get yeah. the applause going. And then the journalists are kind of desperately trying to sit on their hands, not get excited, because it's unseemly <laughs> to applaud at an event you're covering. That's unseemly. Well, it? it's it's a breach of... Honestly, I think it's a breach of journalistic ethics to applaud at a press conference. Yeah. But, you know, I, I must admit, I last time I did it, 2003, I felt very ashamed. 2003? But, what was that for? Uh, Palm Prix. Ah. I was so glad to see ah, Palm back. Yes. It was yeah. just like, it was... This is... I, I have still have my Palm 3X, and I love yeah, it dearly. Yeah, moment. Yeah, it just... And when I thought they were back, and then they just died on their asses. I was applauding silently inside when the iPhone was announced, <laughs> when the iPad was announced. Oh, but the first but iPhone, silently inside. The first iPhone was a dog with a great UI. It was a dog, you're right. And do you think this will be a dog to watch? Um, actually, I think Apple's going to, I think it's going to be the best smartwatch out there, simply because Apple is doing what it did with the iPod and the iPad and the iPhone is coming second generation into the market. You wait for everyone else to make their screw-ups first. You come along with a good custom chip some good software. I reckon they could clean up on this one. The, the rumors are oh. they've made five million for day one. Um, I wouldn't be surprised they sell a million on the first day. No one, no smartwatch has done that well. Pebble's sold a little more than a million, according to Pebble. 
they got a yeah, very good Kickstarter going this uh, this week. Yeah, though, they're, they're new. What do you think of that? Uh, we have to mention that Miriam used to work for uh, Pebble. Oh, right. yes. I, this, full, this, full disclaimer that I did. Um, they went back very, to the well. I'm very excited about the product, uh, having seen the hardware when it was being created, uh, especially the, the metal version. Um, really great, great hardware. You know, they're they're keeping true to what they're good at, which is a daytime readable display that's always on and Holy fantastic cow. battery life. But yeah. I call a display sixty four colors. It's it's they're they're very pastel, so don't expect to just use that to see pictures. It's more like to increase the readability of right. the UI and give you some sort of color coding for notifications. But um look at so that. Sixty six thousand backers. They're almost to seventeen million dollars. And it's only I'm been 11 excited. days. I'm very excited that they launched this finally. Kudos to the team. But I think going to Kickstarter for this is, I, I, I you know, it's clearly extremely successful. It's unseemly. Like it's, it's using Kickstarter as a, as a store, not, yeah. like you're not pledging anymore. You're buying, yeah. you're ordering. It's unseemly. And I think that's kind of breaking Kickstarter. I and of agree. course, Kickstarter is on board because they're making a ton of money at it. <laughs> but... But like, I just think it's, I don't know, it's kind of icky to me. I agree. Um, and it seems it's a very smart strategy in terms of marketing, very clever. That's but, what it was. All yeah. about the marketing, because they could have got the money any which way but loose. But the I heard people that I, that don't even know about technology talking about, do you hear about this phone? Or, I mean, this watch but, on but, Kickstarter? But there's I'm like, one thing, what do you there's care? One thing, <laughs> there's one thing people are forgetting. If you look at the number of watches, how many watches, sorry, how many pledges are there? How many backers? 66,802. Right All right. So that's how many watches are going to sell out of this. Or right. probably more by the time it ends. That's not a huge number. Do you know, I, I, cannot speak public, I cannot speak of the numbers in public, but let me put it this way. When Steel launched at CS, that's, that, that number was peanuts compares, in comparison in terms of number of pre-orders, Okay. So, Which number was peanuts? So this one or that one? This one. Sixty-six so thousand is peanuts. Is it's everybody's looking at the the 16, seventeen million. Seventeen million is not peanuts. Nobody's looking at sixty-four. Seventeen you know million puts it at like two hundred and forty dollars a pot per person. Well, okay, so, so there you go. You're, you're right. Now let's you talk price. Bought the watch for two hundred and forty pot. Oh, side note: Apple Watch is going to uh, sell out when it goes to launch. I think Just you're right. Just because oh, the they, fact that the people that eBay and sit in line to buy it so they can hopefully sell it to somebody else. Half the people in the line for my iPhone were selling their ticket in line or buying the, the phone to go and sell it online or to somebody else. So Same. John Gruber yeah. has a There's great a article, uh, and it's complete speculation. We'll find out more tomorrow. A couple of things he raises. There are two sizes for each of the three models, 38 millimeters of 42. He says, don't be surprised if the 42 costs a little bit more because mm -hmm. it's a little bit bigger. Uh, he also says... Um, well, he, he, he quotes Apple's description uh, of the high-end uh, band. Now, a lot of people forget that the band may be sold separately or a watch with a fancier band may be sold separately. The, the steel, which is the, the middle watch, there's the sport watch. We know that's going to start at $350. We don't know what the steel will be or the addition. But the steel, the best band on the steel is what they call the link bracelet. And then Gruber quotes this. Listen, this is Apple. Crafted from the same... 316L stainless steel alloy is the case. The link bracelet has more than 100 components. The machining process is so precise, it takes nearly nine hours to cut the links for a single band. What? In part, yes. that's because they are... This is Apple. They aren't simply a uniform size, but they subtly increase in width as they approach the case. Once assembled, the links are brushed by hand with small minks. No, I added the minks. <laughs> to, to ensure the texture follows the contour of the design. The custom butterfly closure folds neatly within the bracelet. I mean, they're setting you up for an expensive band. I'm sorry, band. that's not the dog's box. That is utter bollocks. I mean, it if, takes if, them nine if, if hours to make one band. Yes, nine hours to one band. Come on, Tim Cook is a COO master when it comes to <laughs> operations. There's no way that they can. There's actually... a little Swiss guy. He's sitting <laughs> there with a crazy. loop, and he's going hey, hey, for nine hours. Yeah, right. <laughs> or I there's a, a or there's a million Chinese guys in Shenzhen. It says nine hours. He's not going. He's going to lie. You I, think he's lying? He might. 
he might lie. I I don't know. I, I need I need Apple's copywriter so I can get a date because they make everything sound this is sexy. So I could date supermodels. <laughs> Mymatch.com for me. I gotta find these people because it's so insane. And you would think that you think he wouldn't lie and say nine hours if it didn't take nine hours. But the cost effectiveness of that, it's. Making me angry. I Small can't Chinese children it doesn't will make labor for nine hours without lunch <laughs> to make your special link bracelet. Well, they got an army of robots. Yeah, somewhere. Maybe, maybe it's a robot. Well, anyway, this, I mean, this is it. There's no way you can do it cost effectively if it takes nine hours per but, band. But it doesn't matter. Impossible. It doesn't. It doesn't matter because the prices will reflect that. See, look, it takes the <laughs> HEC. No, no, listen to me. It takes 150 minutes, 150 minutes per HTC One M8, last year's model, to machine the case. Oh, okay? that's interesting. So the new one takes about double that, according to them, because wow. of the dual color, the dual anodizing. It takes three hours to make the yet. case. But okay? they have a lot of machines so, and a so, lot of... So why not nine slave? hours for Apple? Yeah. All I'm saying is that when the watch sells for 10K and the bracelets ten, sell for one or 2K each you'll see that it makes perfect sense that it takes this long. Right. And it will attract the right kind of customer. Trust me on this. I think okay, here's Gruber it. is yeah. totally right. Now, now uh, got to acknowledge Gruber may have, this may be somebody leaked this to Gruber, uh, in order to set up everybody so that when the real price comes out, they'll go, oh, see, it's not so bad. Or these are, and, and John says, this is just guessing. The Apple Watch Sport, we know, 350 bucks already. Uh, the Apple Watch Steel, the middle one, Sport Band, 750 bucks. The classic buckle, $849. The Milanese loop, that's the one I want because it looks like water, right? Uh, $949. The link bracelet, $1499. Or if you want it in space black steel, $1899. Almost $2,000. That's the middle of the road one. He then he says the gold one, the addition, will go up to $10,000. Yep. Credible? Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. I'm, I'm sure there are fanboys out there who pay it. I mean, there are people who will pay that kind of money for a Rolex, which gives you worse timekeeping than a cheap digital watch you can get from a garage. But, you know, it's a fashion statement. It's not it actually is. a functioning timepiece. I'm sure, as I say, there are fanboys who will pay that. But for the bulk of people who are going to be buying this, if they're going to be selling a million on the first day, they're not going to be spending that kind of cash. No, they may sell, you know, thousands of the gold one and, and millions of the sport watch. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be some git with more, more money than cents, which decides, yeah, that, that's right. a great way to go. I think the thing you have to understand is it's about Apple's traditionally always been about profit, right? Making profit, not quantity. So they make so much, they're going to make so much profit on those on those fancy watches, the editions, that, it, you know, they don't need to sell that many. And also... Um, Think of the Chinese market, which in which they're well established now, and in which it's a status symbol to own an Apple product. Some people there are just going to not care and just spend the money, and I, they'll do it again every two years. Trust I'm, me on this; it'll happen. I'm not so sure about the Chinese market. I've got to say, I, I, I'm speaking to someone who's who's living out there at the moment, and they're saying there's almost a, a kickback against buying Apple at the moment because it's better to be seen to be buying homegrown brands. Right. And show me is doing some really good stuff, and why is doing some really good stuff. It's, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of rich people over here who will pay it, but I'm not quite sure about the Chinese market. And I don't think Apple's quite got the lock on that yet. People will be watching with interest uh, price, but also battery life. We don't know yet. We know it'll last a day, but what, but in what way, we don't know. Um, apparently, there may be some unannounced uh, features, nine to five uh, Mac. Uh, Mark Gurman, who's got great sources, uh, has some uh, interesting uh, ideas. But we'll find out tomorrow. It's all going to be, all will be revealed tomorrow. One of, one of the wow. things he says is that the watch is always measuring your heart rate. Uh, uh, heart rate glance, thanks to the device's heart rate monitor, will allow the user to see their beats per minute anytime. Anytime. Uh, so when they get the bill for the gold band, they can say go. But you can send it to your loved ones too. You want to feel my heartbeat? I'm sending it to you right now. <laughs> That's <laughs> slightly creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Apple has said the heart rate sensor will be used to send other sent users their heartbeat via the communication features. Uh, it actually owns this data as well. Yeah, well, Apple's been pretty good about insisting that, that they protect your privacy. 
You may Absolutely. be skeptical about that. Actually, Apple are, are better than both. Better than most. I am a little bit skeptical since Tim Cook was the only person that turned up when Obama came around to Stanford the other couple of a couple of weeks ago to talk about uh, yeah. how everybody needs to pitch in and help the government. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. What we want to protect you. Least before, least convincing performance since Elton John got married. But yes. It's just... <laughs> Um, I, I we'll find out. I, I, you know, it'll be it's a product. It'll be it, it's exciting because Apple hasn't announced a new product category since 2010 when it announced the iPad, uh, and you know what a success that was. Um, I, I, tomorrow, 10 in the morning, we'll know. We'll find out. Should be uh, should be interesting. It's gonna be an exciting day, I think. You know, it, it's it's funny how, and this is Apple's so good at. at shaping the message no matter what they announce it's kind of a geek holiday isn't it i gotta say i'm i'm looking forward to it so much if just that we can no longer have our news feeds clogged up with <laughs> the new apple watch it will cure leprosy and raise the dead and you know it's just okay let's get it out there let's see what they've got and let's critique now, it openly i have heard I on very good i have heard on it from a very reliable source that the watch is not the only thing that will be announced tomorrow the much-awaited new uh, MacBook Air oh. Retina, mm. supposedly, now this is, comes from a source that uh, is impeccable, will be also announced tomorrow. And it is time for Apple to refresh their MacBooks because they are a little bit behind. Both Dell, Lenovo, um, and others are using broad, Intel's Broadwell chips. Those came out in January. So it is time for Apple to do this. It would be a logical time to do so. A Retina MacBook Air would be a great product. I, I don't really care about that so much. I want that super thin, light light one that they've been talking about, the 12-inch one. The iPad, the new iPad. No. Oh, no, no, I think this will be that. This will be that. MacBook Air. Yeah, this will mm. be that, the 12-inch MacBook Air, yeah. The super thin, That's I'm buying that tomorrow. I don't care about the watch. With only one connector. How, yeah, I was going to say. Uh, look, how, I bought the original MacBook stuff? Air the day it was announced, and I live perfectly happily ever after. And look, <laughs> everybody's got MacBook Airs now. So it, don't worry. It's it's just a matter of getting used to it. So this new USB Type-C connector, uh, a couple of things that are, it has going for it. One is re like lightning, it's reversible. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because I'm wow, always trying time. to. I'm trying to. I'm always sticking that micro into upside down into the slot. Wrong hole, Uncle Leo. Exactly. Wrong hole. And, it, and uh, it's bad. Just bad. All <laughs> but what is weird about what we've seen in the rumors is that this, this USB-C could, could also do power. Mm. It could do everything. So the rumor is there will be one and only one connector on this new MacBook Air that will do everything. Power, data, uh, video. Yes, it can be a, for your H, you know, your 4K display, all of it right. out of this new Ethernet, everything. So they're going to come out with this new awesome squid dongle with like eight <laughs> arms. You know, I would laugh at it. that. I would laugh at that. But look what they did with the uh, the Mac Pro. It's all about so the guys, dongles. No, I, 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 it, it's that's just so much. Again, it's Apple. I'm sure they paid a lot of money, uh, paid a lot of attention to how they're going to work that out. I just need to see it. And that, what, the whole hype stuff, I, I have to shut myself down from it because, like he was saying, it's going to cure leprosy. You get so much hype in your mind. Just shut up and get here tomorrow, 1 o'clock for me. I got to wait till the afternoon. You guys get to wake up to it. I just need to see the stuff so I understand it. Because when you say it, it's like, what are you going to do that makes that functional for normal people? Again, it's a well, finite group of people that are nerds and love everything Apple does. So we'll see. I'm skeptical on the USB-C because it doesn't bring anything to the table that Lightning and Thunderbolt don't already do. And those are the two things that Apple is using. And so I don't see them. I mean, look, there's a type. There's one device out there already with Type-C USB, and that's the Nokia N1 tablet, which was announced back in December and was finally, uh, we were able to play with it at, at Mobile Congress. Uh, it's an Android tablet made by a part of Nokia that, is not absorbed by Microsoft, and it's a very nice-looking iPad mini clone uh, with a USB Type-C connector for charging and data and power. But on a MacBook Air, I, I, I don't see it. I think that they might have the USB Type-C connector and include a dongle to connect regular USB devices to the MacBook Air because it's thinner, but I still think they would 
you know, they would still need some sort of lightning or thunderbolt connector to do everything else. It would be quite a departure. And, and they have their own standards. But uh, the, the thinking is that this is not a standalone device. This is not your mm. only computer. This is your new accessory computer. I see. And that in order to make it really thin and elegant, now, and certainly this would get a lot of attention, this single connect, this thing... I mean, I can totally see Johnny Ives saying, and we've eliminated all the connectors. There's <laughs> just they one. You're mocking my people, yeah. sir. <laughs> <laughs> I love Johnny Ives. Oh, me too. Me too. I love him. But and, he's, and this is the new design-focused Apple. So, Miriam, you're thinking al along the lines of a functionality-focused no, no, company. I'm saying That's is not that what we're seeing. Lightning is a better solution for the exact same problem. Why would they go to USB-C when Lightning does it better? It's because a faster connector. It's, it's reversible. It's Apple. It's got power on it. The thing is also the USB implementers forum, they, they're demoing the Type-C cable about six months ago. Yeah. And they were quite bearish about how quickly it was going to be adopted. Yeah, and nobody's done it. Now, it may okay. be that Apple has taken a jump on the game, but as you say, they've got Lightning and Thunderbolt. So, but they had Firewire before Lightning and Thunderbolt. What happened to that? Yeah, look what happened to yeah, yeah exactly. Look how well Apple, that did. I see, so many, and I, see, I see so many people with Apple devices that still use a USB three hard drive. Like I've got thirty of these things sitting around. I could get a Thunderbolt drive, but I don't want to because if I want to do something else with it, I well, mean, it's too expensive. You say these things. The cables are expensive. Things, the mass market does not yeah. use those devices for storage and, and them. And everybody the, knows USB is they use USB. SD card, so whatever. And this is designed... Apple does whatever they want to do, but that's not how the world works. This is designed for somebody who has a Mac Pro or an iMac and has Thunderbolt, and this is just your little thing that you take with me. I, I'm sure there'll be a little dock that'll give you, you know, a connection. Or maybe yeah, they'll like, use continuity and handoff and, and, and it's magic It's like your Chromebook. And, you don't need to plug in anything. You right. just have the internet It's all everything. in yeah. there. Yeah, send anyway. everything over our network. You know, get a, a, a time capsule with a hard drive and ship everything through that. You don't need any connectors whatsoever. This is a breaking I story. This is the magic. I have this on good authority. Watch tomorrow. We did think for a long time the watch is such a huge announcement. There's no reason Apple would dilute it with anything else. But this would be kind of interesting. It would mm -hmm. tie in with one more thing, certainly. Yeah. Um, I don't think there'll be an Apple TV. We will see new Apple TVs this year for sure. Um, Beats, uh, I think the, the word is pretty clear that Beats uh, will be revised not in iOS 8.2, which is coming out for the watch, not even in 8.3, but 8.4, probably will be talked about during WWDC. Um, actually, that's an interesting story. Let's take a break and talk about Apple's plan with Beats is starting to become a little bit clearer. And since you're wearing Beats headphones, oh, doctor, I think we're going to let you... Take the I think all we're talking about is phones today. This is phone. This is phone. No more Sunday. phone. We're going to talk about music, man. No yeah, more phone. And then I actually do want. Well, there's one more phone story. I'm very intrigued by Google's plans. And again, Google's not confirmed this. I think to become a wireless carrier. Yeah, well, and they, a very different kind of wireless. Desperate to carrier. do it. I I'm desperate for them to do it. Um, so let's have it happen. Before we go on, our show today brought to you by Squarespace, the place to make your beautiful website, your blog, your online store, easy to use, elegant, mobile responsive. That means every Squarespace site looks great no matter what size screen. Giant uh, iMac, 30-inch screen HD, quad HD, or a little a mobile phone. It's simple for you to use. It's very powerful. And I got to emphasize beauty. It is aesthetically fabulous, which is why so many artists, photographers, designers, chefs, people who have a great aesthetic sense love Squarespace. Squarespace 7 is fantastic. They have added something called cover pages. Let's you set up a beautiful one-page online presence in, in inst, instant, creating a landing page. It could be for you, for your brand, but it could also promote be for a new product. The, if the support is remarkable, you're not going to need it. But if you do, 24-7 live chat and email right from the Squarespace offices in New York City. They have e-commerce, the best e-commerce of any s system. I mean, uh, they have ShipStation. They help you with shipping. They'll help you with tax calculations. It's all built in. Uh, look, it, it, you've got to try it. And the nice thing is they're so confident. You just go to squarespace.com, click the Get Started button. You can set up a Squarespace site 
completely free for two weeks. Import data from your old site. Get a real sense of what Squarespace can do for you. All before you buy, you don't even give them a credit card. Take advantage of that. Start a trial. No credit card required. Start building your website today at squarespace.com. And when you do sign up, all I ask you, use the offer code TWIT, T-W-I-T, you get 10% off uh, your purchase. And that means, you know, subscribe for a year. That's what I do. I pay a year at a time. $8 a month. And when you get that year, they even get the give you the domain name for free. Squarespace.com, offer code TWIT. Uh, we'll be back with more of our fabulous panel. But first, if you missed anything this week, oh, you missed a lot. Let's take a look at what happened on Twit this week. Previously on Twit. Twit Live Specials. This is Mike Elgin at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Spain. On so much news to report, so many new gadgets, toys, technologies, and trends. Go, 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 go. Tech News Today. It's really great to see lots of very innovative technologies uh, and products from lots of different countries. You can attest to it, and you have now fingerprint on your phones. Security Now. We have the guys who have hacked not only cars, but UAVs. Pretty much all modern cars, the high-end ones, will have a telematics unit, which is a cell phone modem that had a buffer overflow. If you played all the right tones to it, uh, you could <laughs> reprogram its firmware. Before you buy. This is a high-res music player. It'll even play back FLAC, Apple lossless, the highest quality high-res file. It's a definite buy for the FIO X1. Twit, I get your touch surface oh, no. right here. Oh, no. no. You can't tell I'm naked. No. Don't pan out. No. Oh. How embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as long as we're talking uh, Apple, let's talk about Beats. So the, the story line now seems to be developing that Apple's not going to offer a free version of streaming at all. You know, Spotify, and the music industry hates this. Mm -hmm. Spotify does, everybody does, RDO does. Uh, Taylor Swift said, no, you can't. I don't want you to put out my album on the free version. Spotify said, well, too bad. So Taylor Swift said, fine, I'm not putting my stuff on Spotify. And the quality of their music went up in measure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it hurt Spotify. It probably didn't. It gave, got them a lot of great publicity. Taylor Swift isn't going to be hurting because she's still selling albums. She by sold the a alone. huge number of albums. Yeah. Um, you know, there's an awful lot of depressed teenage girls out there. So, um, yeah, I don't think it hurt Spotify at all just for them to say, right, fine, if you don't want us, you don't want us. It does feel like, though, that she, she kind of represented the music industry planting a flag saying, we think free services undervalue are what we do. Mm -hmm. We don't get enough money out of it. And apparently what Apple's doing is capitalizing on that, saying to the record industry, don't. And in fact, give us exclusives. When you, we're going to revamp Beats. It's going to be, I think, $7.99, less than the $10 everybody else is charging. And, when, and the goal of Apple is to have lots of exclusive launches. So when Madonna's new album uh, comes out, it's first, of they hope, it's first available on Beats, then a month later available everywhere else. And that would, I, well, let me ask you, oh, doctor, what, do you listen to streaming music? Do you use a streaming music service? I used to, I don't any longer. I am, I'm with the Taylor Swift Nation on not Spotifying things and not having things for free. So because I, you want to support I, artists, you buy the music. Yes. Um, and, and I'm just old school. I like having things quote unquote on demand and not having to use the app or the internet. Like I, I use um, iTunes match so I can download something, but I like having it on my phone. And it, it's one of those things where Apple is behind the game as far as a streaming service, but they're ahead of the game on getting people to pay for product. Right. So if they come to you and say, Hey, just pay us seven ninety nine or whatever the amount is, a lot of people are going to do that. And a lot of people are going to want to do exclusives with them because it's Apple and because of the title they have. I think that they're going to take beats to another level with that. Do you think the the horse has left the barn? I'd, honestly, I, <laughs> I I think it's a remarkable turnaround. I mean, you remember how many ten years ago uh, how the record com record industry hated Apple for dictating yes. to them what price they would sell their music at, whereas they wanted to sell at one price. Apple was saying no. You're going to sell it at the price we set Apple it at. Apple broke the album by selling in, 99 indeed, cent singles. Indeed. And now it's coming back round and Apple is saying, you know what, guys, let's play nice. We can both make some money out of this. And admittedly, and I, and I agree with what you're saying, artists don't get paid enough on Spotify. They don't get paid enough on Pandora. It's a it's an endemic problem for the industry. I'm just intensely suspicious of Apple saying, right, we're going to be the gatekeepers on this one. 
Well, they they did a really good job. The, the reason when everybody hated it is because someone else was taking control of the money, right? But you fall in line when everybody starts using that service and you accept that and you get paid and you realize that CDs are going away and now even buying albums are going away and streaming is coming in. So for Apple to come in and say, hey, you're going to get more of a chunk of the pie than 80% of those people that are paying on a free service, especially when you're giving us exclusives and bringing people in as adopters, at least you're going to get some money from me. So even if you're skeptical, Apple, you're going to say, hey, at least if I go with them, I know I'm going to get money from something if someone's playing my songs or, or listening to my album. So it's it's a different dynamic. And you believe and trust in Apple now if you're an artist, especially because a lot of artists are doing independent launches. I mean, they put albums out on iTunes with no marketing, no video launch now. You know, like Beyonce, her last album came out I love directly Beyonce on iTunes did. on a on a, overnight, Wednesday night. Yep. Turn on iTunes, a million downloads the next day. And a video, no video for each song. No, no one knew she was doing it. It was boom. Yes. Yes. And I mean, not everybody's Beyonce, obviously, but I'm saying if they could land places like that or like how Jay-Z did his album release with uh, Samsung. I know people that wanted to buy the phone just right. to get Jay-Z's album because they're Jay-Z freaks and they need to have his music first. Didn't Prince give away so, his album with the, the Guardian or the Telegraph or something? Uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> that was a bad I mean, one. I mean, that one didn't work. Other, okay. other bands have tried it. Radiohead put an album out and said, just pay us what you... Pay yeah, us how did that work? You want. That didn't work too badly for them. It did make as but much. But that's Radiohead. Bit. Yeah, you know it's so. And that's what I said. Bigger I think it's going to be better. But I would never ever say that the music industry could get a clue, right? These guys are clueless. They're the definition of clueless. So this clue they're getting from Apple is meaningless. I think the real clue you get, you take away from Taylor's, Taylor Swift's, uh, uh, shenanigans, uh, from from Radiohead is, from all of these is the best thing to do is forget the labels. Mm -hmm. Create a fan base, build a community, and go direct to them and eliminate yeah. all of this other crap. Because who's supporting Taylor Swift? Why could she do that? Her her fans who love her yeah. and wanted to if buy the album. To, if you listen to Spotify, they'll tell you that they made Taylor Swift. And by discovery, we we That's helped BS. build her fan base. Yeah, that ain't then. true. Yeah, she I mean, built it, her fan know. base and and did it with very savvy with great music. And, I, yeah, I mean, we saw the same thing with the Arctic Monkeys in the UK from my hometown. Yeah, yeah. They encourage their fans to go out, share the music, get out in line, get, build up a fan base, and they went mega. And they um, they hate record companies. You know, they, they do, even in, in interviews with music journalists, they insist on buying their own drinks. They're that much purist about it. But they built, I love they built, they built a great following that. about it. But now you have to be a great musician. You have to have yeah, something new and exciting. You've got to have talent. You've got to have talent. You've got to build an audience. But if you were the Beatles today, I think the last thing you'd want to do is sign a, a deal with a EMI or Capital. I think the most important thing to do would be get a website. Yep. If you've actually got the talent to do it, fine. Record companies are very good at pimping out Crap manufactured artists. manufactured bands. Yeah, and manufactured Keeping artists. Simon Cowell in Rolls Royces and that yeah. sort of thing. And yeah, if you've got the talent, get out and do it yourself because they, they have nothing to offer I you. think that's the real lesson. And I think Apple and the record companies got the wrong message from, from Taylor <laughs> Swift and everybody else. The real lesson isn't, oh, no, music has to be cost money and we, you, you, there shouldn't be a free service. The real message is we don't need the record industry. Mm. They're the I, guys. I will tell you. I will tell you, just for reality check outside of your bubble, you still need radio play and you need no, spin you and don't. you need hype. You're kidding. Become. You need a Listen DJ? Okay, let me tell you something. There's there's countless artists that I could just name and I'm not going to waste my time that started off doing their own YouTube thing. And I'll just take somebody stupid like Soldier Boy. Before anybody ever heard him, he was he had millions of followers on YouTube, millions of views on his videos. Uh, uh, Mac Miller, same thing. He was two years on YouTube, had a huge fan base. But you know what? Until he got on the radio, regular people didn't know who he is. I knew who he was because I'm on YouTube all the time. I thought Soldier Boy was really a YouTube creation. I don't think radio helped Soldier Boy. I don't think radio helped Tyler the Creator. I think the, those again, guys. Soldier Boy was on the on YouTube for two years. He gets on the radio. Next thing you know, everybody's doing a stupid dance, and he's known all over the world. There's a different. There's a different. Radio level did not sell in, Soldier in Boy's dance. Okay. <laughs> Did it? It's a, it's a stupid thing. I'm telling you, yes, they do. Yeah. When you see people doing all these dances, it's you you hear about it, but then when, as soon as somebody takes it and puts it on the radio and puts it on MTV, it's viable. It actually goes viral, as stupid as that sounds, but it gets to the masses. So there's a lot of people that can make a career, yes, doing their tours and doing their circus. There's a lot of people who've never blown up. They never will. We'll never hear about them, mm. but they make a living every day. But if you want to go mainstream, you do need those things. I mean, I'm not saying you need a record label to do it, but you better find somebody who's 
great at getting you on radio or getting you on television because you need those things. I will say and that's do, what the record company gets. You do raise a good point. I mean, I hate to mention Soldier Boy in the same name as this because it's going from sublime to the ridiculous, but just to, <laughs> just Justin Bieber, for example, was very big on YouTube, but it wasn't until he got on radio that he started making really stupid amounts Perfect of money example. out of it. Really? I told you, I can, I can give you a ton of list of people. Tons, tons of people just like that. And that's a perfect example. Justin Bieber, same thing. YouTube sensation, cute, whatever. And as soon as he got with Usher, Usher got him hooked up with a label, got him on the radio. And now everybody's baby, baby, baby. So I'm I telling know. you, you live in a bubble of thinking, the internet's great and cool and all. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I you think, still need I the think, real world. Who listens to the you, radio? Everybody. Yeah, and I you the guys, boat, right? oh, you're an old man. You and I are in the <laughs> like me. Like, I don't know. I'm on the radio. The I don't listen Remember, now, Chris is six, 17. You listen to the radio, Chris? It's, a, it's on everywhere. When Where's it on? When people, when people play music, they go to the radio. When people play music in public, they're playing from the radio. Wait, there's such a yeah. thing as the radio still? Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, uh, so I live in the tech bubble, and all we listen to is Spotify. No. How dare you say No, I watch my airways. kids. They're not techno literate. Free, free they watch so YouTube. can't afford to download music or pay $99 a month for a subscription base. They can't Where go do you even buy a radio? It comes free in your car. Oh. Yeah. Radio so in car. Okay. So when you're in your car, I'll grant you, when you're in your car, people listen to the radio. Where else? That's enough time. I actually wake up. To, I, I'm one of those Leo's a slave people driver. Nobody radio. now listens to the radio. You, you have a clock radio? I have a clock radio, and I wake up, and it wow. clicks straight on. I had a clock radio when I was 18. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just because the technology is old doesn't mean you you're just a it digital out, you know? grandpa. You're you're the cool grandpa that still has an iPhone. You're, you're the guy that everybody wants to hang out with when they when they go. No, normal grandparents aren't like you. But really, uh, radio. I mean, are there people who like break new music on radio? Really? Who where? Main, for for it to tidal wave in the mainstream? Yes, we've had this conversation like two or three times. And you live in a I digital know. world. I know. Li I like. I like to everything breaks I, on Spotify. I didn't have this conversation. But it doesn't. You know, I think Owen is right. I think Owen is right. Leo, you and I live in a world of digital where we don't listen to the radio and don't watch TV. And the closest thing that comes to the radio is when I go on a long road trip and I listen to XM radio and it's only one channel that I listen to. And it's brand, it's like uh, the, the new wave station because, you know, I'm old. Don't you guys have um, iPods? Who? You. Don't you have an iPod? Why do you I listen do. to radio? I, my phone. My, I, what do you mean an iPod? I have a phone. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. What's on I'm the radio? That's not already on your device. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> can I? Can I just 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 so you could just be a regular person for like thirty seconds? <laughs> in the <laughs> real possible, world. Owen. In in it's the not real possible. world. No, it's not possible. But in the real world, some people don't give their kids. My daughter's got an iPod, an iPhone, a Mac Air, but not everybody's balling out like me with their kids. So what do they do? They give them a little headset and they listen to the radio and they get in the car and they put on radio because there's no cursing and there's no foul language. They can trust the music that's coming in and they get brainwashed. There, there's a lot of things where a, a large market of people can't afford to have an iPod and a Spotify account and all those things that you're saying, like that's where music gets discovered. Music still gets discovered heavily on the radio, and I know a lot of kids that sit there and watch MTV Raps and, and the Rock Channel on MTV all day long in the background. It, that's how the real world still works. And the world you live in in San Francisco, where people pay $4,000 for a shoebox and a woman makes the news for living in a garage for $1,000 a month, isn't the real world. It's not the real world. Get outside that box and come over here and hang out. Not with me, because I'm still balling. But go back to the folks that can't afford stuff because you're diluted in your mind about how you think the world works with discovery. It's not real. I still love you. Well, somebody's got to tell the radio business because they're collapsing. Oh, you guys, three people listen I to the radio. They're I've, applauding. I've got to say I'm with him on that <laughs> all right, one. They yeah. do too. All right, too. All right, all right, maybe. All right, all right. You're going to be sorry when radio goes away. What are we going to, how, how will we ever find any music? But by then, everybody will have their free Spotify account. No, I'm waiting <laughs> for then, wet By then, the world will get on board. And, and most regular people, not tech people, always listen to Pandora. Everybody I know complains or pays for Pandora. No, no, no Pandora is fine, yeah, for most people. Most tech, most non-techy people think right. that's the best entry. That's the, that's the gateway drug into the tech and streaming services is Pandora. No, Pandora is much bigger than the, the next next 10, yeah. Oh, I'm glad to know radio's okay, because I tell you, the radio industry thinks it's dying, but I'm glad to know the radio's okay with real people. It's, uh, it's surprising to me that people discover uh, music. What station do you listen no. to, Chris? I don't listen to any station. I just hear it. Oh, oh, he doesn't listen to any station. He just hears it. It's ambient. It's ambient. 
I was gonna say, is this a podcast? <laughs> or don't you run like a podcast? I mean, you're, no, I know you're I make, video. I make the bulk of my money on radio. I got to point out the. Radio. But, uh, say, <laughs> I actually, I, I actually work in radio, so I do. I do. I do hope radio survives. But I'm surprised so, yeah. when I hear people listening to music radio and th say that's how they discover music. That shocks Get me. Get on board with me, Captain. You're on, you're on the wrong ship right now. <laughs> you, you still want to be in people's ears. You even, hope the radio even, still I got to tell you, so uh, the company I work for, which used to be Premier Radio and Clear Channel, has renamed itself not iHeartRadio, iHeartMedia. They don't oh, like the yeah. word radio. You won't you won't hear them talk about radio at all. Nobody. You go to radio conferences, they're all saying, how do we survive the collapse of the radio industry? Because they, they hear people like you talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and their argument is to stop calling it radio? I mean, Well, they want to be internet. They want to, you know, that's what iHeartRadio, they're trying to, yeah. they're I mean, trying to say, well, I know kids today, they're not going to listen, so we got to do it on the internet where they can hear us. So, so it's interesting to me because oh. the one thing we haven't talked about at all so far, we've talked about like song purchases, album purchases, streaming radio, uh, streaming uh, uh, services like Spotify and Pandora. We've talked about regular radio. I've even brought up XM radio. But one thing we haven't talked about, which I actually do listen to a lot, is internet radio. And what right. I mean by that is people who are streaming 24-7, they're DJing. They're setting what yes. I'm not picking what I'm listening to, and I love those stations. I listen to a whole bunch of them that are a lot of them are in the Bay Area for some reason or whatsoever. I guess you know it's a bubble tech, again. Tech, tech. But but the point is, those all you need for those is like an app like TuneIn um, on your phone, and off you go. They use Shoutcast, which is an old standard that was created alongside Winamp. And it, they're excellent, you know. Uh, one of them, the ones I like the best is Dog Lounge. There's a bunch of them um, based in SF as well that are like electronica dance and 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 that are really really good. Has anybody listened to those? Because for me, the biggest thing about that I hate about radio, radio, official radio, like what we you know can get out of the airwaves, is the sound quality is is crap. Even XM sounds like crap. Oh, XM is actually you worse than XM is serious. Satellite radio is not high fidelity. So that's why I'm. But saying. there is HD radio out there, and most cars now I think have HD yeah. radio. Mm. Yeah, but um, HD I, I was going to say. Great, I, so. I, I, I've listened to music that way also, and there's a couple of stations in New York, like Hot 97. I can't get them where I'm at, so I always listen to their app. I have their app on my yeah. phone, and a lot of people listen to music like that. Like, my one friend's from um, Seattle, and they listen to, I'm like, what are you listening to? And they're like, oh, it's a station in Seattle. And that's what he's always listening to, because they, huh. they stream it online. So there's yeah, different DJs yeah, like what he's talking about, and radio stations you can find. Well, I just hope my bosses don't hear me talking this way, but I just... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why they changed the iHeart Media. Leo's not supporting so the team. <laughs> There's Soma FM here in SF, and there is uh, KCRW in, San, in oh, yeah. uh, LA, yeah. which is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, if you want to listen to some quality radio, and then I listen to CBC, the, the Canadian radio. They have a bunch of really awesome streams uh, playing some really awesome. Talk about music discovery. That's the best music discovery. Actually, you the can BBC get right has there. some great music uh, uh, stations. BBC, actually, it, it's kind of depressing because the main BBC music station, Radio 1, but that's aimed at the younger market, and I've started listening to Radio 2 now, and it's just like, wow, tracks from the 80s and 90s. Yes, <laughs> I am getting to <laughs> That is depressing, yeah. But, but is it 4? Is Radio 4? Somebody is... Radio 4 is, is gold. It, it's, yeah. It's, it's, you're, it's our equivalent of NPR, but it's so much better. Yeah, I love it. Um, but the big advantage where internet radio comes in over something like Radio 2, 3, and 4 is that you can get decent pirate radio, st or what used to be called pirate radio stations, <gasps> setting up. I love and that. And not having to... If you're trying to tune into Radio Four and getting sort of a jungle pirate station on the you know, virtually the same wave that wave band, internet radio makes it so good for that. But it's a question of getting to your market, and pirate radio, what we used to call pirate radio, spreads around by word of mouth. And I haven't yet found a decent app which allows me to skim through the internet radio stations that are out there and find something that sounds good. So if you've got any suggestions, always up for that. K I'd make one, but Uncle Leo said apps are dead like the radio. So, I <laughs> so, so I'm just getting I can old. help. Um, I, again, TuneIn Radio is an app. Love for, TuneIn Radio. Um, Love it. iOS and Android and, and, and Windows Phone. And it, it you, you can search. You can There's a directory. You can look around. You can explore for radio stations. The other one is honestly anybody who's got a Mac with iTunes installed. iTunes has a section. Actually, iTunes radio, radio is excellent. It's 
this not is just broadcast radio. stuff, but this they're is on iTunes, iTunes internet radio section, which has an entire directory again. Oh, and searchable. I was told that's going away. Well, I hope it doesn't because I really. I like agree. It. I mean, but you, but there's so many ways you can listen to internet radio now. You don't. True. true. Yeah. Uh, let's take a break. I'm being a little, you know, I'm being a little devil's advocate because, in fact, I do work in radio and uh, <laughs> and I and I have my fingers crossed for radio. I'm just surprised to hear that people still discover music by listening to a radio station. It doesn't feel like the the yeah, Rodney Bigger and Bigenheimers of the world are still around. The, it, it doesn't look. Cool. I mean, I remember uh, about four years ago, uh, five, five, four or five years ago, listening to Radio Four, and they were doing their roundup of music of the week, and they had a band, a Norwegian band called Kings of Convenience, and they played a little track of that. And then cut it out. Now, the radio was useless for getting into new bands, but then you went online, you searched for them, you downloaded some stuff, you then went and bought some albums. That's the way it works now, I think. And isn't yeah. it interesting that Apple just hired uh, a DJ from Britain? Was he a BBC radio DJ? Who was this so. guy? Ah. Oh, I missed this completely. You didn't see this? Yeah. No. Uh, hires uh, they're hiring the BBC they are hiring a pretty well actually that's not entirely yeah, true DJ anymore. Zane <laughs> Zane Lowe Low. Radio 1 really what he's going to work for Apple he's good okay his last show was uh, March 5th yeah no he's actually a, a pretty good DJ he's got good taste in music terrible dress sense but that tends to be part of the course these days <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting old, but you know. Maybe you are getting old. That's not that's not that's not your attire, Pop Pop. Oh, there's a panel of grandpas <laughs> over there today. Well, back in my day, we used to wear suits. I'm uh, still you very liberal, you know. But, but <laughs> I, I think I frankly think that this is, tells you where Apple wants to go. Was curated that they want to do discovery on uh, their new Beats thing, and they want people like this who are well known for helping people yeah. discover new music do the same uh, on the internet. All right. Zane Lowe is in his 40s, so he doesn't count. <sighs> That's what the chat room's telling me. God, I'm, how do, I'm so old. We're going to take a break, come back with more. I want to tell you about the number one most innovative company in 2015, according to Fast Company. Who do you think that would be if you were going to pick? Warby Parker? Yeah. Let me get my Warbies out here. Warby Parker is bringing changes to the eyewear industry. Changes because, frankly... Uh, the eyewear industry got subsumed by one big company who artificially keeps the price of eyewear, frames, and glasses up. And uh, uh, the guys at Warby are classic internet entrepreneurs who said, there's got to be a better way, a better option. No more bland choices, no more overpriced frames. Glasses at Warby Parker started at $95. That's including the prescription lenses. You, you, I use progressives. Those start at two ninety five. That's about half what I pay. Did, they also use these kind of cool digital freeform lens, so you don't see the. They're smooth. They're beautiful. Advanced progressive technology. Digital application means you get a larger field of vision, so the design is more precise than traditional models of progressives. All glasses include and no charge anti reflective, anti glare coating, a hard case, and cleaning cloth. I am a fan of Warby. Now you might say, well, how am I going to buy glasses online? This, the Warby Parker Home Try-On Program. So I want you to go to warbyparker.com slash twit and choose five pairs of glasses. They've got really gorgeous frames. And they will send you this box, and uh, you can try them on. You can show them to your friends. You can post pictures of yourself on Instagram. You can say, what do you think of these? These are. I just picked these out because I, I need new frames. They include a special frame box and a prepaid shipping label, so it's very easy to return them. You choose the frames you want. If you uh, if you haven't entered the prescription, if you, you can get them in sunglasses, but if you have a prescription, give them the prescription details. Warby Parker takes care of the rest. Here's something nice. For every pair, I like these. I'm going to go with these, I think. For every pair of glasses you purchase, Warby Parker sends another pair to someone in need using the uh, nonprofits like Vision Spring. I think that is so cool. I like the OLPC. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Like the OLPC, the one laptop per child. One pair of glasses per child. Get the free home try-on, get a free three-day shipping on your final frame purchase, and do it all at Warby, W-A-R-B-Y, Parker, P-A-R-K-E-R, dot com slash twit. We, I've been uh, buying my glasses at Warby Parker for a while now. Very, yeah. very happy. Yes, sir? Remember, um, I don't know if you know this, but on my, on my Twitter, it, it says that I'm from the future. Remember yes. earlier I had the fresh thing and you had the fresh? Well, look what I got. What's that? Oh, man, how'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? They they love me a little bit more than they love you because look at this nice fancy box. I know that you I got, got a fancy one. Let me see. Let me see. Which ones box. are you thinking of? 
This this is this is just pure coincidence. We did not know. We did not set this it, up. It right? really is. I've never met you I'm before. I'm from the future. Okay, I'm, I'm from the future. You. you you didn't know what I was. So doing. you I'm buy the products before we advertise them. <laughs> so I'm, obviously, I'm doing it wrong because I'm not saving any money. Oh, that's to, all right. I need to go back. Let me see. Let and me they're see. actually they're actually not for me. I'm buying them for my daughter. So these are girl glasses. Oh, that's another thing. Yeah, I mean, really? kids' glasses. If you right. have children, kids' glasses are very well, well, expensive. Look at, these are tiny for my big head. Yeah, you yeah. Know that they're not for me. I don't know. I think that's kind of a good look. That's it's also quite handy because kids go through glasses. You know, they oh, get broken man. all the time. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, that's a good look on you. Do you wear yeah. glasses? I used to wear glasses, then I got LASIK. Oh, smart man. Well, I bet Best you wear sunglasses. Warby I Parker's do. got them too. Warbyparker.com slash Twitter. They look a bit too stylish if they're buying if you're buying them for your daughter, you need them to be complete man repellers. Yes, so, exactly. You know, just, uh, my, my daughter is a purple belt in jujitsu and now an orange belt in karate. Nice. She is her own man protector. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That is great. That is great. Hey, speaking of that, this is International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. Thank you for telling me that, Ian. Ah, uh, well, I've, my wife was reminding me about it and pointing out that it's time for me to take her out to dinner to celebrate International Women's Day. And I tried to explain to her that, in fact, she should be taking, taking me you out, out to dinner to right. celebrate her independence. Yes. And then decided to shut up because I might want to have sex again this month. So it's just... <laughs> uh... So what I, I have, we have not covered the Warby... Uh, not the Warby, I'm sorry. The Kleiner Perkins uh, uh, trial. But apparently it's gotten kind of salacious. I haven't... I've not been reading about this. It's the San Francisco Superior Court. A former partner is suing Kleiner, which is the one of the big VC firms, uh, asking for $16 million in damages for gender discrimination. And uh, I, I have not been following this, but I have a friend who has, and, and they keep saying, have you heard the latest? Yeah. I mean, even my next door neighbor said to me today, she's like, have you heard about the, the, this Kleiner Perkins thing? I have. Because it's, it's looking pretty bad for them. I mean, they're, they are... The Silicon Valley blue chip venture capitalists. Oh, absolutely! You know they were there right at the start, and um, the stuff that's coming out in this trial is, is just—you know—they had a, a an away weekend with investors and clients, and it was decided not to have women there because women might bring the di bring the event down. <laughs> um, you know how women do that. Yeah, yeah. And then they, one of the um, investigators, put a graph in there looking at how well women's partners' investment had gone compared to men's, and oh, they were doing dear. much better than the men. Oh, they dear. weren't getting promoted. It's looking pretty bad. I mean, not Wall Street bad, but by the standards of California, pretty bad. It's, well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really surprised. As a woman, I'm not really surprised, you know, working in tech. Um, there's a lot of BS out there. And 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 I, I think the VCs, um, at least, you know, a lot of the ones I've interacted with are generally pretty sexist they're boys and clubs aren't they really it's a total boys club yeah. and it's total douchiness yeah and it's just reinforcing a lot of the stereotypes and i really hate to say it because you know uh it shouldn't have to be that way you know like there, there's no reason for it just none yeah i mean it's and some of the stuff that's coming out in the trial is just <clears throat> you know it does seem that men get away with a lot more in the in not just in this company, but in across, and you've seen this across the whole of Silicon Valley as well, that the tech bros down at the marina in San Francisco, it's just, I don't even go there anymore because you just grind through the teeth enamel it's just like muscle really punch this out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say that word, but no. It's, very true. Yeah. Very, very true. It's a, it's a very ex a very exclusive boys club. Mm. Another and tech. That, and, that boy, and that boys club looks like a very uh, different shade of the same yeah, color. Kind also. of a light, yeah. a light, a light shaded boys club. Uh, yes. Actually, unless you're Indian, and then you're more than welcome, because we go. know that Indians are very good at math. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm I'm joking. <laughs> Hillary, no, no, I'm not it's joking. Sad. They no, are good. No. I oh, no. <laughs> it's sad. It's sad. You can't make jokes anymore. When you're, you're in a hole, Asians. stop digging, mate. Just I'm just digging. <laughs> just Asians. Just digging. Now, now it's everybody. You, you got to watch you say. Uh, this is a weird tech story, but I think it is a tech story. Hillary Clinton, who was Secretary of State, as you know. Uh, never had uh, an official.gov email address while she was Secretary of State, even though she was supposed to. Uh, instead, was using her own private email address. Now we find she was running her own Linux-based email server out of her house. Right on. Smart woman. That seems good. Smart woman. <laughs> 
Uh, now, it's I, not, I, I, you're I do not supposed to do that, obviously. I do question if she was running the Linux server herself. Oh, yes. maybe she had somebody else. And then, and then uh, somebody tweeted. Now, I don't know if it's Linux or not. Maybe, maybe Fox got this wrong because somebody tweeted the uh, address. Oh, it came from Fox. It's probably wrong. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> Fox, get things wrong. <laughs> Never. Right about that. Somebody tweeted the uh, address. It's it's a uh, HTTPS, which is nice. I mean, she's you know got it secure. Um, Mail.clintonemail.com, and if you go there, it's running uh, Windows Server 2008 RS. I think RS2, RS1. And it's running an Outlook uh, email um, uh, client connected to Microsoft Exchange. ClintonEmail.com apparently is the... Uh, 2008. She's obviously a traditionalist. Though, yeah. Well, you know, she, you know, we don't want to move fast. I don't, I don't know let why such a big deal. I understand it's wrong because your uh, government email is uh, part of the public record. And uh, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the people. Uh, you know, for instance, every president's email and mm -hmm. documents and records, they're all public. I mean, they're not necessarily open to the public, but they're kept by the archivist yeah. and eventually open to the public. It's part of history. Uh, and she knew those rules, clearly. She's a, a savvy person. On the other hand, I, I got to give her a little respect for, first of all, having the balls to do this, right? And then for running it out of her house. <laughs> How else is Bill going to use Match.com privately? I think that's it. <laughs> this is the question. How okay. else is Bill going to use his internet privately? I mean, the guys, I'm sure it's for the husband. She's like, look, I know you're out here doing what you do when you're on these tools. Oh, you think it's Bill? Songs. You think it's your Please bills? just keep the emails public. Yeah, yeah. it's Bill's. Yeah. But it's so unfortunate because you had that whole meme with Hillary using her BlackBerry in the in the plane with everyone oh, yeah, right. around. Oh, yeah, right. And now this is this is the come down. But <laughs> she's not alone on this. The Republican National Committee got censored for this a couple of years ago for oh, really? sending political emails on their own servers rather than the White House ones. It's... That's right. Know. You're not supposed to do any uh, fundraising or campaigning within the White House or within a government office. You're and supposed to go over to the, you know, the RNC and yeah. do it from there. But for Hillary to say, "Oh, I didn't know," it, it's I think she bit, knew. Yeah. The she, thing is, I mean, if you she's running to, a small business server in her basement. <laughs> yeah, the, and the thing about doing, saying stuff like that is, again, the way the world works, it's, it's very easy for somebody to find out if you knew or not. So unless you plan on setting the, setting everything on fire, well, that's a good thing. I mean, that's a good point. It. Is that there's no way she could hide this. No, no. I Means obvious. Yeah, that's why. It, again, but people say things all the time. I did not have sexual relations with that <laughs> woman. <laughs> I, I mean, well, so I gotta say, tell I you, know. I did have a mail server in my basement. He had a server in my basement. I did. And then, you know, I do. So. And I have a barbecue smoker out back because I love the barbecue. <laughs> Apparently he's gone vegetarian now. He's, he's gone vegetarian. Well, Have you yeah. seen him lately? He looks great. He, well, he looks slender, slender, slightly haggard. I would have said. Well, he's an old man. What do you uh, want? A man needs beef once in a while. You know, it's <laughs> just like I, I bet you Bill's listening to Spotify. Uh, I listen to the radio. I'm, I'm That's sure where I, wanna, I get my music. I'm not sure I want to see you Bill's browser really history, really to be well, honest. Leo. This is on I'll do it a little too well. well you, do that. you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I don't know why I channel Bill for some reason. I don't know. Oh, come Etsy. On, keep going. This is no, great. I can't do it anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't go on. Uh, Etsy files for a uh, IPO, $100 million. That seems low. It seems that like seems Etsy. reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, where's the billion dollar valuations and all of that? You do wonder if their share prospectus was done with like glitter and little, little <laughs> stick on the bills gun. around it. But yeah. You know, 100 million is not sure bad. I'm pretty sure that's how yeah. other presentations go down like that. I'm, I'm almost positive. You know why it's not bad? Because last year they had a $4.9 million loss. Mm. On 108 that's million dollars in revenue, someone should tell it? Twitter that because they're still. Yeah, know, that's true. I love um, Etsy. Is that uh, shameful for me to re to reveal? No, I love Etsy. Everybody loves Etsy. Etsy's great, especially if you want quirky stuff. Like I saw this um, how to train my dragon hoodie. It doesn't mm. it doesn't get shipped to me till March, but I saw it all over the internet. I, mean, I, I suppose you're gonna say that's like, for your daughter too. <laughs> I got I well, they don't make it in dinosaur size, even though it's a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. So she could wear it. I could feel proud that she's wearing it. But I was like, oh, let me try Etsy. And sure enough, it was on there for oh, like yeah. pre-order because that's where creative things are made. This is why I need a drunk filter on my on my laptop because Etsy is the perfect thing to get when you come back from the pub a little bit wankered. You turn it on, you go, yeah, that looks great. I'm gonna have some of that, you know. And then a package appears at your door, and you're just like, what was I thinking? What did you I? Know? How do I have jackets for mice? They do have. <laughs> they do. They, some of the stuff is a little weird. My okay. cat's gonna love that. Yeah. You know? How about a stormtrooper wooden phone case? Now that looks good. 
I thought it was a panel. Somebody spends oh, a lot of time was. with a with a Dremel. Just <laughs> pretty awesome. On one level, it's a great example of human creativity. On the other hand, it's like it's why deeply, deeply sad. Yeah, here's the uh, Mooney and Word Wormtail of Padfoot and Prongs Marauders map. See, if I saw somebody with that using that in public, I would run <laughs> and not look back. <laughs> That's definitely it. Rubs the lotion on its skin type territory. Wow. Yes. <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> I don't know what that means any more than I did dogs bollocks, but I like it. Scroll up. Was that a glitter, a hippopotamus? What was that? Oh, ladies' earrings made of uh, lady uh, hippo earrings. Those made of, wow. How much is that? I need those. Uh, wow. Not for myself. You're not pulling if you're wearing those. It was sold, That's, by the way. I, They're made in I'm Bulgaria, getting, as you might expect. I'm, I'm getting <laughs> Apple to write my, my Tinder profile. I'm going to start pulling ladies. <laughs> By next year, Owen will be 42% slimmer. <laughs> only one dongle. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, boy. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, oh, this is an interesting story. HBO apparently is about ready to get going with its new uh, HBO Now. Of course, you've seen HBO Go, which is an app that... Uh, runs on many devices, Roku and uh, Android and, and so forth. And HBO definitely. Now will not, HBO Go requires a cable subscription. HBO Now will not. You do wonder Ooh. if people like Comcast are going to block it, though. Oh, Comcast is going to hate this. Yeah. And yeah. this is where, well, this will be a good test of net neutrality because they would love to block it, wouldn't they? And they're still bound by the terms of their last takeover, but we'll see. I'm yeah. sure there's ways and means around that, and they've proven very good at finding sneaky ways around it. They hate this idea. It's going to launch in April, which is perfect timing because guess what else launches in April? Game of Thrones Season 5. Uh, mm. Fifteen. Now, this is a question. $15 a month. Worth it? Hmm. Hmm. That's a... I, I think that's high. That's about what that's you pay, high. isn't it? For uh, no, that's what I pay for Hulu and Netflix combined. That's yeah, that's true. But I, I pay seven ninety nine and seven ninety nine, so I'm going to pay fifteen dollars. What do you pay for, your cable like, company though for HBO? Um, right now I don't pay my cable company anything. I've got a friend that hooks me up. So <laughs> I, I, I'm on. A, I'm on. <laughs> You're really sure you want to admit this on air, mate? <laughs> oh, <my laughs> God. Hey, hey, what are they going to do to me? What are you they wait do to until me? the RIA police kick down yeah. your door and yeah. then. It's just... <laughs> Uh, according Leo to... Leo can't even find me. <laughs> I don't know where he is. He's a mail drop somewhere in Philadelphia. Uh, it's $13 to $18 a month for most cable companies. Uh, so it, that's why. It's 15 would make a lot of sense. Um, and they don't want to cut the market, I guess. Like two, Well, but the real risk much. is... Uh, eight, and this is why it's taken so long for this to happen. This is what they call over the top, right? It's on internet, not directly from the cable company. But most of the revenue for most cable channels comes from cable. And when you do something like this, you really risk irritating your most important partner, which is the cable companies. Um, if HBO goes over the top, it's just the beginning, I think. A lot of people are going to watch, see how this works. If it does well for HBO, they, I think they tried this in Scandinavia already. Uh, if it goes well, I think you could see you could expect to see more of this. Sling and Sling TV started it right with ESPN and uh, CNN. It's twenty bucks a month. You get ESPN, CNN, some Disney channels. Comcast is really not going to like it Ooh, um, if you no. compare the Comcast versus the FiOS app, for instance. Comcast has dedicated a lot of time and effort to where I don't even have to go to the HBO app anymore because everything is contained in their system. As far as Fios, they're not that well integrated, so I still have to go and use HBO Go for a lot of things. But Comcast is really dedicated to giving you a great enclosed mobile experience. So I'm sure they're going to be highly upset with this move. On the other hand, I think the cable companies have known this is coming, right? This is not a surprise to them. Well, you'd think, but they, I mean, they've been... Whereas most people were building windmills to deal with hurricanes coming, they're trying to build, build wind breaks, and that just right. doesn't work in the long term. Right. Well, that's, so, a, that's an apt sure. phrase. Uh, Chairman Mao, I'm afraid. But, that's a well-turned well um, well, well turned phrase. But, build I mean, a windmill, not a, uh, a wind break. But exactly. But, I mean, they've they've done this time to go. I mean, HBO is looking at its most popular program, Game of Thrones, is the most pirated thing on the web. And they're saying, oh, we want some money from that. Right. So let's try this out and see if it works. Two of the more forward-thinking cable companies, well, Cablevision is. I don't know about Cox, but Cablevision and Cox have both said, you know what we, what we'll do is we'll bundle this with our broadband package. We'll get, I think what's going to happen is they're going to get the money one way or the other. Mm -hmm. They're going to recognize that people want to 
okay, you want to cut the cord? No problem. It'll cost you exactly the same as it costs now for your cable bill. And now how do you now mm -hmm. how do you feel? Because that's, well, that's, that's that was, well, I think it's also a question of, of the cable model and that how many things you can they can they're not going to be able to bundle in all the useless and channels that's what people that you hate. Didn't, Yes. You didn't want. I mean, right. why on earth would I pay for Joe Bob's fishing safari if right. it's just if That's I just want show. HBO? You don't like that? That's a great show. Oh come on, watching people <laughs> fish. You know, it's just like it makes paint drying look interesting. You know? And they have a weird way of setting things up. Like, so I called Fios and I said, "All right, I I don't want TV anymore. I don't I don't use it. I don't need it." And he's like, "Well, if you keep television and just lower it down to the lowest grade." We can drop it down to seventy-five dollars, and if you send us back your box, right. we could drop it down to fifty-four dollars. Right. So I said, okay. So they cut me down, and I've still been using this box. And I get so many channels with it, and I'm like, well, why was I paying one hundred and fifty dollars every month? And I feel like I still have ninety percent of the channels that I had before I told you I was going to cut it off. It, it it's so weird how they market that. I'm like, so I, I'm going to pay fifty-four dollars to still have TV. And my internet. When if I just had my internet, you want to charge me eighty five dollars? I'll, I'll just keep this t TV then, I guess, for the for the reason of that. Like the price differences and the price points are so odd. It's like they just charge whatever they want to charge. Yeah. And even when you drop stuff, it doesn't matter. Crunchy who's listening and uh, chatting. He says he's in Sweden. It costs ten dollars a month. Um, so that they're doing a kind of a trial. Seeing how much they can take American consumers for. Right. Well, if the Swedes will pay 10, Americans will pay 20. Well, yeah, plus the Swedes have got a decent broadband network, whereas yeah, most well, people here true. are on dribble networks. Yeah, that's so true. It's... Yeah. Hey, we've talked before, and I was actually hoping John C. would be here, but he'll be here next week. John C. Dvorak will join us next week. But I'm curious what you guys uh, think about uh, net neutrality, the FCC vote. We, talk, we talked about it last week. Of course, it happened a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but what's interesting to me is that it's even in our chat room, a lot of people who I thought would nominally be for net neutrality are not, are upset about this and say, oh, oh, watch out. You're going to have to pay license fees to podcast any minute now. Are you worried about that? There's an awful lot of FUD going on around this. I mean, we yeah, haven't even seen the FCC sure. document yet. That's true. You the know, rules are not out. Yeah. The rules aren't out. And everyone's like, oh, well, I mean, I've seen some figures, 15 billion in, in extra taxes. It's, uh, people are just talking out their backsides on this. Until we see the document, we don't honestly know. Right. And then the lawsuits will fly, fly and it's going to get ground down into something which is just about acceptable to all parties. But, I mean, we've got the same problems in Europe with net neutrality now as well. So it's going to be years before this is sorted out. That's the voice yeah. of reason. Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason to be upset about it. I, I People try to ask me, but I'm like, I, it doesn't matter. I don't know anything because you don't know anything. Right. You could tell me it's going to be lighter and thinner. It's the same thing mm -hmm. I waiting for Apple announcement. You have no clue. So just make up whatever you want that makes you feel better at night and yeah. wait and see. That's what we have to do. I'm excited about uh, Google's, and the, I don't think Google's confirmed this, rumors that Google will become a wireless carrier by bundling. I think this is fascinating. Uh, T-Mobile and Sprint connectivity with Wi-Fi. They've signed deals for it already, yeah. Your Nexus 6 will, according to the Wall Street Journal, choose whichever's best. And you'll yeah. pay less because of it. It makes sense. I mean, the technology yeah. is there to do this. you just got a whole bunch of entrenched networks like Verizon and AT&T who don't want to play ball. And Google is desperate to get out there and break this ISP stranglehold. It's going to piss Nexus 5 owners off because apparently it does <laughs> not work with the Nexus 5. Yeah, that was that was. I hope the Wall Street Journal is wrong on that because I like my Nexus 5 yeah. and I'm you know I'm not wild about the Nexus 6 I know it's, you guys have broken yours already so you know it's, <laughs> it's, it's software anyway I'm sure somebody will find a way to retrofit it. Well I, I noticed um, the Republic Wireless has figured out how to um, do a very elegant handoff between Wi-Fi and I think they're on the Sprint network I used one of their Motorola based phones and it did I mean I was on the phone with, in the house making a phone call on Wi-Fi got in the car drove off and all of a sudden, they hand off to 3G or 4G or whatever, and it worked. It worked really uh, seamlessly. There was no bump or anything. So I think the technology, I think that it does exist. Um, but this, according to rumors, could happen any day now in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm excited about it. Monday, Sundar Pichai did confirm plans for a wireless uh, service, but uh, no further details coming out. I was out. actually at that keynote. Were you? Yeah, he uh, 
He confirmed a lot of things, which was really interesting. It was a very forthcoming uh, conversation, wasn't it? Yep. He's getting out there an awful lot more, and I know that... I heard from someone at Microsoft, they've got him with voice trainers at the moment, because when he gets excited, his Indian accent he's, really gets pronounced. Oh, I thought he was going to... So, his voice goes up an octave. No, oh, no, no, no. But I mean, he's... <laughs> you can't understand him. I mean, after Steve Barmer, this guy is a breath of fresh air. <laughs> oh, I love Sundar Pichai. You know, yeah. Barmer was just a road accident. Yeah. And... Um, you're, thinking, you're thinking of Satya Nadella. Oh, this is not Satya Nadella. Oh, this is Sundar Pichai. Uh, Sundar Pichai. I'm sorry. You know, all those Indians really look alike, don't they? Don't, now please, we're God, really don't in say deep that. trouble. No. We're in such deep trouble, Ian. Ian Thompson, oh, Ian. ladies. <laughs> no, easy mistake. I shall, I shall be flogging myself later just to, to make up for it. You know. <laughs> hey, good news, though. One of the moves Sundar Pichai made is to move um, uh, Bradley Horowitz back to running Google+, Plus, which is great news. I want, I want, I'm the only guy, me and Jeff Jarvis but we and Mike Elgin, but we love Google Plus. I love Google Plus too. There's Do you? four of us. And there's five, oh, yeah. six. We got six of us. Let's start a social network. <sighs> Yay. Yeah. Um, Google, I mean, yeah, Google Plus. It's very quaint. But. It's not quaint. It's <laughs> wonderful, and I love it. And not you know what me. I love? And it's interesting because uh, Bradley um, said, I am not, I, my new title is in charge of photos and streams. Even though it, apparently it is Google Plus, and photos are a big part of what Google Plus makes Google Plus so great, I think. Indeed. All right. Yeah, dangerous as well, though. When first, when people first get Apple phones and start uploading there involuntarily, you do wonder what gets put up. But uh, as well, our I, Android phones, yes, I've been very quick to make sure that I uh, delete all the butt pictures. It's the kind of thing that it's kind of like backups. You you make the mistake once and you never make never it again. again. For a while, my I was getting my son's texts and photos. In That's college. not something you want. Well, gave me a lot of vicarious thrill. <laughs> All right. On that on that note. It, oh, wait a minute. One more story. Forbes. Inside the post Minecraft life of billionaire gamer god Marcus Person Notch, the guy who created Minecraft and sold it to Microsoft for I think three billion dollars, of which he got the lion's share, because apparently he just really kept almost all of the company. Has uh, he's done with game design? And he's just going to live the life of a billionaire. It's, it's quite a smart story. Move. Did you read it? No. What What does it say? Oh, it's painful reading. It really it, it's, is. It's I would. It's hard. It's hard to go on about it here. Like he bought a twenty three thousand. He outbid uh, Beyonce and Jay Z for his twenty three thousand square foot mansion in Beverly Hills, seventy million dollars. It has a candy room. Every house should have a candy room. And exactly, I bet he's right? got a 15 by 15 empty room he could dedicate <laughs> to the Vive. He'll be broke in five years the way he sounds. He sounds like somebody just hit the lottery. How like 90% yeah. of those people go broke in a couple of years. He grew up in the Arctic Circle and now he's worth $2 billion. I think he should do whatever he wants. Yeah, I mean, they, they were talking <laughs> about his office, which has got a full service bar and a DJ room where he can practice his spinning. And he just, his toilets are made of solid gold. <laughs> it, it just it, it sounds like a guy who was just, I mean, he, he got this massive payout, got married, got divorced a year later. He sounds like he's just flailing around trying to find something to do with his life. And with that kind of money, there are plenty of people who will find you things to do oh, in your yeah. life. But, oh, you know, yeah. It's, um, it's like... Yeah, uh, it, it reads like a bit of a train wreck. Yeah. Oh, really? Because I, I really love uh, Notch, and I think Minecraft is really a, a, amazing. Uh, it's the Lego Minecraft invention. Is, yeah, it's like Lego. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, just, um, no I just let my no daughter doubt. start doing Minecraft about two months ago, and all of her friends are just so consumed with it, I kept it away from her as much as possible. I waited till like the sixth time she asked me about it before I let her get it. And again, today, it was like, she's like, what do you want to do? She's like, can we watch movies and play Minecraft? And I'm like, uh, okay. So for four hours, for four hours today, that's what we did. We watched Once oh, Upon a Time and Minecraft. And oh, I was like, you're a good father. oh my God. You're a good father. I, I only do it like once a month. I told her, I was like, we can't, I can't oh, get down. We got dad. other things to do. I got like life. But it's, so kids, apparently, kids are so into it. Apparently, a person gets a lot of uh, nasty tweets. Who doesn't? Uh, but he responds, or lately he's been responding with a uh, 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 um, animated gift from the movie Zombieland of Woody Harrelson wiping tears away with a wad of money. That's good. Well, if you're going to tease the trolls, <laughs> it's a way to do it. You know, he it's... says, I'm aware it's a little douchey. <laughs> <laughs> As for girls, he says, I tried to use Tinder. It didn't work in Sweden. It's horrible. They're only like four people. 
Well, he's a Scandinavian as well, because you can always tell an extrovert scran- Scandinavian yeah. in that they look at your shoes when they're talking to you <laughs> rather than their own. But no, it's, it, it's got to be tricky when you've got that much money out there and you've got nothing to do having sold off your big invention. Do you either plow all that and try to find the next one or... Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's a good animated gift. I would post that. I don't, I don't want to do anything. I, I'd do just what he's doing. I'd live the dream. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Spend it all. Make yeah. sure I don't leave any for my kids like Uncle Leo. I'd have, a can- <laughs> I'd have a candy room. You know what, Marcus? If you're looking for something to do, I got a little podcast network. You could do a little show. You could DJ <laughs> if you want. Whatever you want. Just come on up. The hell with a candy room. I want a scotch what? room. Just like <laughs> <laughs> Scotch room. Uh, hey, we're out of time. Uh, I, uh, I, this is so much fun. Ian, you're always great. Thank you for being here. I appreciate com- you're coming up. Always Ian, fun. Ian Thompson, the register.co.uk. Uh, and he's at uh, Ian Thompson on Twitter. But if you can figure out the spelling, you're a better man than I am. I blame the parents. <laughs> I-A-I-N. That's the real spelling. Scott spelling, yes. My my uh, my father is half Scott. And oh, neat. Wanted to pass it on to me along with his kilt. So. <laughs> you're wearing plaid. Uh, well, yes. Is I that see- the family plaid? No, no, no. This is Lord knows where this came from. But I did wear a kilt to my wedding. So. Did you? That's nice. I always wanted a kilt and the sporin and the and the whole thing. I th- I think a dress kilt would be so great. It's I tell you, it it, it really that looks look good. good on you, Leo. It's better than a tuxedo. Oh, infinitely. and it looks good on portly men because I don't know why. Because we have lovely calves, I think, <laughs> and you want to show them off. Um, oh, doctor, always great. <laughs> <laughs> superb, super. Yeah, you know, you know. Hate is gonna hate. <laughs> Don't hate the player. Feel hate free the game. To tweet at me. Yeah. yeah. On the twitters, I oh. got the internet. These shoes aren't cheap, Leo. I got like forty-seven <laughs> pairs of them. They weren't cheap. Owenjjstone.com, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, doctor on the Twitter. Nice to see you, JJ. Thanks for having me, Uncle. And thank you, Miriam Joar, who got basically no sleep in the last twenty-four hours. Just back for an hour from Barcelona, joining us on the air to give us your report from Mobile World Congress. And now you're going to head down to South by. Yeah, you're very welcome. It's my pleasure to be here. And uh, no, I did get some sleep on the plane. It's not that good. bad, but I will have a good night of sleep tonight. Don't worry. Good. Um, yeah, off to South by. So I'll probably catch up with you about that when I get back. If you want to do any crowd surfing, I can give you some tips. <laughs> I will. All I right. will tell you about that. It's a, it's an, exp- it's a, it's an experience everyone should have at once. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for being here. We do Twit every Sunday afternoon. Notice we have changed the daylight savings time in the United States, uh, so our time is a little different. If you haven't yet gone to summertime, um, we are normally uh, and now from now on at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, and uh, that is 2200 UTC. 2200 UTC. You'll have to do the math to figure out what that is in your area. You don't have to watch live, but we love it if you do. We love the uh, feedback in the chat room if you get into uh, our irc.twit.tv chat room. But if you can't, on-demand audio and video always available after the fact at twit.tv and wherever you get your shows or get one of our great apps. You know, our community is what makes Twit happen. It's pretty It's pretty remarkable. And we didn't do any of the apps, just people who are fans, and we thank you all. Same thing with the chat room. It's really a community uh, we provide the server and the community runs it, and that's just great. Uh, we were very grateful to you. If you want to be in the audience live, always nice to have a live audience. Just email tickets at twit.tv. We'll put a nice comfy chair out for you or not. Uh, no, he's going, no. I <laughs> uh, didn't get the comfy chair, eh? Uh, Did the chairs come with radios? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> we are, uh, as I said, this was episode 500, which is a wonderful milestone, but an even bigger one coming next month. April 19th, we are going to celebrate the 10th anniversary of this network. I can't believe we're 10 years old. And we're doing a lot of things on that episode. We're going to bring back all of the original uh, cast members from the first uh, few weeks of TWIT, including John C. Dvorak, Kevin Rose, David Prager, Patrick Norton. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're also uh, hoping to get some greetings from... uh, some of my favorite people, like, uh, I don't know, Mike Arrington, Jason Calacanis, people like that. We'll put uh, the word out. We'll see who responds. <laughs> Jason, I do, want, I do want one from you. Uh, but we're also asking you if you've got any great moments that you remember. It doesn't have to be from this year now. This is from any year in the last 10 years. Uh, we've got a, a little page for you, twit.tv slash best of one zero. Best, best of, of 10. 10. And uh, whatever you can remember, that would be useful. I guess we'll do little clips. We'll do a clip. 
good I've, thing. I pulled a lot of great moments already. Um, I, you know, I would rather have more than less. You know, too much than too little. So. Kind of hard to believe it's been ten years. Thank you, Jason Howell, our years. producer. Yeah, but not many podcasts survive ten years. Virtually none. Five hundred. It's a great number. Yeah, it's a magic number. Well, thank you everybody for being here. We'll see you next time. Another twit. I'm going to say this for the 500th this time, is, is in the can. Take care.